like I've had two or three people say that very similar things, and I'm it's kind of cool to me. Yeah, I like I since at the time uh, you were one of the smaller guys, but you there's kind of um, kind of a little bit of a pack at mm -hmm. kind of the subscriber counts at that time where basically all the pipe guys were you know all the the higher end of the pipe guys were all sitting in this kind of uh you know little spot mm -hmm. so i mean that's kind of you know hold on your 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 window's weird I, I don't think people are going to be able to see you yeah i think uh you just went a little wonky on me i think it's probably because of a a a, a lag issue or a um yeah probably a lag issue Possibly on your end. I'm not sure whose end it is, but <laughs> uh, this is really weird. Okay, hold on. Let me try. It's just like really zoomed in, and it looks really bad. I know. I Actually, think... you switched on me too. So one yeah, of us is not having a good time getting information out to the other. So <laughs> okay. Do you want me to stop real quick and if change this output? Sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. Is there a way to like? I don't know what to do. Okay, everyone, hold on here. We're going to try again. <laughs> it looks so bad. It's just like it's squished in. So Yeah, if you go to edit, you can just you can just re-pull it. That's what I had to do to you. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop real quick here cuz I was trying to re-pull it, but then it's not working right. It's like uh, man, we've had a lot of issues with it. I tried That's why we're always late, too. I know, right? How do you <laughs> so yeah get... we'll, we'll figure something out here and um okay. i see a couple right. people have uh, come in on my stream so hopefully nobody's talking yet but we'll see how's that going yeah um, i'm just trying yeah you just actually popped back out to the original size you were <laughs> so i don't know if i probably just uh did as well uh I don't know. It's really weird. Okay. People are like saying that you're cut off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this guy, this guy's okay. Maybe we should just stay on. All right. Yeah. Uh, are you watching this through the live control room or do you watch it through OBS? I'm watching it through OBS. Okay. Cause it just looks so different than <laughs> what OBS is showing than what. Okay. Anyway. So yeah, I think we're working. You yeah, just stay on top of OBS and you should be okay. If things change, you can just you can just stretch it and move stuff around. <laughs> yeah, and then you show the comments um, on top of OBS in the corner. Is uh, that what you? Do? Yeah, I have multiple screens, so I don't have to do that. But uh, yeah, just keep it keep it uh, available for yourself so you can read them. Cool. Okay, I think we'll just keep this then. I I won't. Every time I switch around, every all, all the resolution says it's 16 by 80, so that's why it's. I don't think it's putting out the right. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what's going it's on. It's freaking out a little bit. Uh, but a friend in my uh, my room says uh, his view looks good at the moment, so I'm gonna go with that. So <laughs> we're all right. Yeah. So um, I wanted to talk about T. Yeah. Um, I figured you were the guy to like talk to about T. So. That's why I'm, uh, you know, I'm doing like mattresses and like sleeping stuff. And so I wanted to talk about like, is there tea? Like, what's the best tea? What's uh, what's tea that might be good for like for sleeping, if that's a thing? Um, I wanted to talk about just anything you wanted to, really. Sure. Well, yeah, I, I've seen a few of your live streams and people have asked, you know, what teas go with what. And um I'm usually in there and I chime in cause, <laughs> and, and then you uh, you were at World Market one day and you were sending me Instagram messages and uh, sending me pictures of what they had at World Market asking me what you should buy. So <laughs> That's what I bought right there. You you recommended to me Black Dragon. Yes, which is, which is a which is a Taekwon Yin oolong. Um, so I figured that was probably going to be the highest quality you'll be able to find, at least in World Market. Yeah, so I was thinking to myself, most of the Western world, we don't know hardly anything about tea. And, um, you know, so this is like, okay, for reference, have you ever heard of Harney and Sons? Yes, I have heard of them. Okay, so this is probably like the highest quality I could probably get that is not 
that that's just regularly available? Is that I mean, do you think they're pretty decent or? I don't know. I haven't had them, but I'm guessing they probably make a lot of flavored teas. Yeah, flavored black tea. So that's just black tea that's been coated in some flavoring, or uh, most of the time, yes. So the those tend to be, um, yeah, they're artificially flavored. So yeah. So that's probably not like is that considered not good or good or how I mean what like what are your opinions on that like is it like a flavored cigar thing where it's not yeah maybe... I think so I mean um, it's really a personal taste obviously if you want to drink flavored tea drink flavored tea uh, I usually don't because there's so much good real tea out there that mm-hmm. there's not a whole lot of need to to venture out into <laughs> the flavored stuff when there's a vast major a va- a, I guess a massive yeah. uh variety of tea out there um right and uh yeah i got um my my aeropress to make some tea today have you ever tried have you ever tried an aeropress i don't have you ever seen these i've seen them but they're probably not something you want to do with tea for the most part because you don't want to press the tea leaves or oh. else you, you uh, you'll release a ton of bitterness so like that's the kind tannins? Of the tannins, yeah. You'll release the tannins. So like doing it in a French press or something. If you want to use a French press, that's fine. Just don't push the plunger. You can okay. use the strainer. That's cool. Just don't push the plunger. Um, um, I've got another. Oh, I've got this thing. What do you think about these things? They hang in the bottom of your cup. If they are big enough. So yeah, if they're big enough and can take the expansion, you should be fine. Mm. But I just saw you had a mason jar right there. I would say throw the... So throw the Taekwon Yin in the bottom of the mason jar and just fill it up. And then once all the uh, <laughs> once all the leaves sink to the bottom, you are good to go and just uh, drink off the top. You probably won't even really? you won't even need a filter. Yeah, they'll all just sink to the bottom. Oh, what? Okay, you just blew my mind. I've never even thought about so that. So that's called grandpa style. <laughs> oh, okay. Is when yeah. you you basically wow. put all the the leaf in the in a in a they usually use like a tall glass. So it's something you'll see mm-hmm. done a lot with mm-hmm. some green teas like Dragonwell, that they'll they'll brew it in a tall glass and they'll just top off the water as they go. So you know they'll drink a little bit once they get down to like half down the glass they'll top off the water. So that's actually called grandpa style and actually a lot of green teas are drank that way in China. What? Yeah. You're kind of, you're kind of blowing my mind right now. That's one of the great things about the, you know, a high quality whole leaf tea. You don't have right. those tiny little bits floating around. So, like the Taekwon yeah. Yin you have, it should be relatively whole leaf. So, it shouldn't be yeah. floating around and whatnot in the little bits. Um, I'm not sure what the uh quality yeah, if of you look at, If you look at the Harney and Sons, it's very tiny Yes, yeah, so that's up. probably not. It's yeah, it's probably not whole leaf, and it's probably mostly broken leaf. So it looks uh, like whole leaf, but it's really com- when you compare it to this. Maybe I was just wrong. My whole, you know. So what's the difference between uh, so black tea, white tea, and then oolongs? It's all from the tea family. You were telling me. Yeah, that's so much the thick- they all come. Uh, yeah, it looks all right. It's probably it a pretty- little bit lower. I saw some stems roll through there, but. Uh, so it's oh. probably it's probably a mid grade. It's probably not a super yeah. high grade, but uh, those are pretty much all rolled up into little balls. So when they dry them, they kind of have this technique of rolling it around in the huge walk, and then it rolls into those little kind of those little balls shapes. Huh. So that's called a really? ro- that's called a rolled oolong. No uh, way. Oh, few- yeah. Yeah. So really? um, what? It says wrapping the leaves in a cloth and binding it tightly into a ball shape. And then when it's roasted, I guess that helps clump it up. Huh? Yep. Uh, so yeah, the, so basically for tea, they all come from the, it all comes from the same plant, the Camellia sinensis. Mm -hmm. Um, there is a variety that, um, is Assamica. So you'll see Assam as some teas. So, it's almost a new species. They sometimes classify it as uh, you know, a new species, but they're pretty much the same. Mm. Uh, it's kind of a variety that's pushing the edge of speciation. Um, but it all comes basically from the same plant. 
Um, it's just grown in different places. It's all processed differently. And then you within you have all types of cultivars that, you know, have been growing in isolation, you know, for a few hundred years. So they haven't been cross pollinating from different provinces and different counties. Um, so as far as the, the, the main categories of tea, you have white tea, green tea, oolong tea, black tea, and then puer. So white tea is basically the leaves are picked and then they're allowed to naturally dry, usually like in the sun. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes they'll bring them into a warm climate controlled area to do the drying if the conditions aren't great. Um, hmm. Green tea is picked and then allowed to wither. And then they'll do a, a process called green kill, which is they heat it quickly so it sets the chloroform so it doesn't lose that green color. Mm-hmm. Um, and then oolongs, uh, let's skip it to black teas. Black teas, which are actually called red teas in China, if you actually directly translated what? it. So black, we call the Western world calls it a black tea, but in China they call it red tea. Um, basically that is allowed, it's picked, and then usually the leaves are bruised to allow for full oxidation. So all the enzymes, you know, are allowed to oxidize, which is why a lot of even whole leaf black tea will have some damage around the edges of the leaf because they need to be bruised to um, damage those cells to release the uh, enzymes and whatnot that allow for oxidation to happen. And then again, those will be, um, once the oxidation process is done, then they'll be uh, usually pan fried or whatever to get the desired shape and finish off drying the leaf completely. And then you have oolong, which is probably one of the larger categories of the fresh teas and that's basically oolong is anything from between partially very lightly oxidated to heavily but not fully oxidated so it's basically the full range like if it's basically it's not green tea but it's not black tea so it's everything between as far as oxidation level goes Um, so there is a huge range within the oolong. So you have the really light oolongs and then you'll have the much darker roasted or more oxidized oolong. So like what I'm drinking right now, I'm drinking some Da Hong Pao, which is a more oxidized oolong. You know, it's, it's a lot darker than, Whoa, those are, those are big, dude. So these are, so this is a twisted oolong. So the leaf is whole, uh, but it's not rolled into a ball like the Taekwon Yin is. Um, so the Taekwon Yin, you'll actually find it in different roasting levels. So you'll find the light roast, you'll find a medium roast, a dark roast, and yours was probably a medium, possibly a dark roast. I can't tell how green it is on the camera. Right, right. Uh, they just kind of call it Black Dragon. Yeah, so um, I'm guessing it's probably either a medium or a dark roast. Um, is it? Do you find it very floral at all? Do you find any floral notes in it? Um, a tiny bit, but it's it's actually kind of earthy and it's yeah, kind yeah. of so that's probably yeah. You're pushing probably that's a dark. Uh, it's either a medium or a dark roast. I'm guessing it's closer to a dark roast. So. Yeah. Yeah, just within Taekwon Yin and those rolled oolongs, just depending on the roasting level, you'll get a completely different flavor profile because usually like a really green Taekwon Yin is going to be really floral. It's going to, it's going to, it's like you threw like jasmine flowers into your, into your teacup. Uh, and then you have the, the darker roasts, which I like a lot more. They have a bit of a deeper, earthier flavor, like you said. Um, this Da Hong Pao is what's called a Wu Yi. It's gro- grown in the Wu Yi mountain region. And um, it's also called a rock oolong. And um, they tend to be the twisted oolongs, and they're usually a lot more oxidized. Um, so it gives you that earthier flavor. Wu Yi? Wu Yi. It's a uh, W U Y I. So. Um, so those are kind of the, your main fresh categories. And then you have pu'er, which is a type of tea. There's a lot of different cultivars, but generally it's, um, it's picked and then 
stored for a long time. So there's actually two types. There's type there's raw and there's ripe. And um, so basically with raw poor, what they're going to do, they're basically going to go process it like white tea. They're just going to let it naturally dry out and then they're going to store it either loose or they're going to press it into cakes. Um, and that can either be done after a long time. They can, you know, let it store it loose, let it age loose for, you know, six, seven years before they press it into a cake or they can press it into a cake right away and then, then age it as a cake. Um, hmm. And uh, over, so basically fresh, um, yeah. And very young raw poor will have kind of a. This is very generalized, but it's going to have a bit more of a green tea like flavor. Uh, it'll be a bit more vegetal, um, and then while it, it once it ages, kind of the bitterness starts to drop off, and it kind of smooths out uh, over time. But we're talking over the course of twenty years, so you know, twenty years is considered a not it's not super aged but it's old enough <laughs> so i mean some people if you can get a hold of aged raw poor it is very expensive so um yeah it, it's kind of tough to be able to sample some of that older uh raw poor these days i mean getting a cake from like 2006 depending on the quality you could be pushing a few thousand dollars for you know Three hundred and three hundred and fifty six three hundred and fifty seven gram is a kind of the standard size cake. I don't know why it's three fifty seven, but that's what it is. So, do people trade that? Like, yes, actually, order? there's a huge secondary market for for uh, poor, you know, being stored and all that mm. fun stuff. And a lot of people collect it and hope it, you know, gains value and they can resell it later. Um, it really depends. There are a lot. So they're kind of like the big uh, poor tea factories um, that produce kind of the same recipes year after year. And they'll also release special editions. So it's only going to be, you know, released one year, maybe over two years. Uh, then you have some more boutique. There's a lot of boutique producers these days. Um, so you have like Unan Sourcing. They're a huge supplier where you can get tea. From China, directly from China. They do have a U.S. site that they do carry some inventory on, but they don't carry all of it. Uh, they've started, they started pressing their own cakes back in the uh, early 2010s, somewhere around there. I think it was 2000, 2011 or 12, I think they started pressing their old cakes. Eh. Hmm. It might have even been 2009 when they started. But anyways, they started pressing their own cakes. So they're distrib- they started out as you know a uh, supplier, a Western-facing supplier for... Chinese teas, and then they started producing their own lines. Um, you have uh, Crimson Lotus, which is based out of Seattle, I believe, but they are pressing cakes right now um, for this year. I've seen plenty of stuff on their Facebook page. They're pressing their their 2019s right now. Um, what else you got? You got White Two Tea. I don't know where they're based out of, but they are a U.S. company. Uh, again, they go over, select all the teas, and press their own tea cakes. So. Uh, so they produce kind of their own stuff as well. So there's a lot of producers. So there's some very large producers like the mm-hmm. uh, 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 Menghai Tea Factory and the Shaguin Tea Factory. Those have been around for a very long time and been making cakes for a very long time. Um, and depending on the recipe can be very expensive. And especially depending on the year can be super expensive. Um, Just on the year? Just on the year, what year they make it, yeah. So, I mean... But like yeah. wine or something like that? Yeah, exactly. So, some years... And they might only produce it for a certain year, just because they had access to some, you know, estate we, where they only produced, you know, so much we, leaf. We were in Napa. We were in Napa Valley. This was last year. And everyone goes... Um, this is like, like, across the board, everyone goes, oh... Well, if you had the 15, that's good. But the 16, the 2016, it was a really wet wind, a wet year. And right. therefore, the grapes were better that year. And so everyone was coveting like this, a certain line or two, a, a few different lines. But they were all coveting the 16, which was like twice as valuable as the you know, as a lot of the other ones. Yeah. And you have that same thing with tea. Obviously, it's going to be affected by the weather. 
Um, so you'll have some variance from year to year. Um, I think I think with wine and tea versus tobacco is that they are perennial plants. Right. So they stay in one spot and they're they just grow year after year, whereas tobacco is planted fresh every single year. So I think they can at least accommodate some of not so much the weather, but at least the soil conditions and stuff like that and, and adjust for for fertilizer and various things. So that's why I think tobacco might be a little more consistent and why cigars tend to be consistent year to year. Mm-hmm. Um, but tea, same thing. It's really the plant's there and it, you can't move it. And it's not, you know, if it, it's been growing there for 600 years. So, you know, you can only uh, do so much. Did you have any questions on uh, or comments on your channel? Uh, I have not. I just have a couple people watching. This guy, his name is Don. He's a he's a good. Well, he's he's been a fan for a while. He says, "What's your favorite tea to pair with a cigar?" All right, and, so that's what I'm actually drinking right now. So okay. I'm drinking Da Hong Pao, which is called Big Red Robe. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a rock oolong, like I said. So it's mostly oxidized. Really, the reason I choose it is it's right in the middle with a, it has a nice sweetness level and it has a nice bitterness level. So it's a super balanced uh, tea. Um, so really, that's can the go, one. That's the one that's a clone. If you, it's a clone, but right. the real one is considered maybe the most valuable or the best in the world. You were saying? Yeah, the most valuable because there are only about three of the original trees left. And mm-hmm. they're, you know, hundreds, I, I, they might even be thousands of years old. Um, so there's only three of the original trees left and you can't get them. You can't get the real Da Hong Pao outside of China. And it's only going to be high level people in the government who are going to be able to get it. Because uh, I think the last time any was on sale was in the mid 90s on the open market. It was something like one kilogram went for just shy of a million dollars. So, and that was the last time it's been available on the open market ever since then. It's pretty much just uh, reserved for high level officials and other Mm -hmm. foreign dignitaries and stuff like that. So basically what happened is they started taking cuttings off of the original trees and started, Mm -hmm. you know, grafting them onto rootstock, just like you would an apple tree or whatever. So then they started planting kind of, you know, plantations of the cloned trees so and they, well, they call that um, is it just like propagating or what? What do you call that? Yeah, so that's just how they propagated clones of of those trees. So now there are um, some plantations that have the clones of the trees, and that's what you get on the open market. So it's uh, it's cloned off the trees, so it's pretty close, uh, but you just mm-hmm. don't have the multi hundred year multi, yeah. The hundreds of year old rootstock and all that right. stuff, you know, attached to it. So I think it was somewhere in the might have been the sixties or seventies when they did the clones. So the trees now are at least the oldest trees are probably around the forty years old or so. Look at look at the weird stream. Uh, I think this is. I think I messed up. <laughs> can you see that? I can see that. <laughs> That's what people are seeing. It looks like we're squished. Oh well, it looks good on my end. So. Okay. I can well, send shoot. you the file later if uh, if we need to. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um... Uh, so to to finish off the last um, the last type of tea. So we're talking about raw poor. Uh, okay. The last is called ripe poor. Um, so this was developed in the late '60s, early '70s. They wanted to figure out a way to age the tea faster, because obviously when when raw poor is considered peak at you know 40 years old takes a long time (laughs) to store some tea to be able to drink it so basically the monghai tea factory started developing the process that is now called ripe and it's essentially fermented in a pile so it's they you know uh, pile it up into big piles on like a concrete floor or whatever um, and then they wet it down and let it ferment. They have to turn the pile and everything. So very similar to how tobacco is is processed, uh, you know, in, in piles and fermented in piles and turned and all that fun stuff. So roughly 45 days or so, they do this process. It 
doesn't exactly mimic the aging process, so but it did produce a product that is pretty unique on its own, so it kind of worked its way in. So uh, Ripe Pour is pretty much a product unto itself um, and can, you know, it, it's not considered um, a, I don't know what you want to call it, a, a bastardization of the raw pour, I guess. I was calling it poo air my whole <laughs> life. Now I'm, I feel like an idiot. <laughs> It, it, I've heard it pronounced both ways. Poor, puer. It's close huh. enough. Um, but yeah, so the the ripe... I tend to drink a lot more ripe. One, because I can't afford raws and that are old enough. And um, I tend to like the, the ripe, poor. Uh, again, it will change with age, so you can store it you know, pretty much indefinitely. Um, but I tend to drink a lot more ripe than raw, uh, poor. And it has a really... Generally, it kind of has a really, really earthy flavor. Um, I've had some that have decent amount of sweetness in there, too. I, I have one that I'm totally spacing the... Uh, I think it's called White Lotus. It was produced by the Monghai Tea Factory just in 2013-14, and I think they might have released one in 17. Um, but it kind of actually has a maple syrup-type flavor to it. Um, so it's really nice, but the, mm. those cakes are starting to go up in price. Um, they're they're probably about in the eighty dollar range now for a for a three uh, three fifty seven. <laughs> but I mean that's not bad. I mean, you know, per per tea session, if you are using five grams per tea session, I mean that works out to you know, maybe what, a buck twenty five per session. So what's your right. regular Starbucks cost you, you know, four dollars? Right. So And and you, you are re steeping five, six times? Even more. Some some pours you can push it out well into the teens. Mm -hmm. Um so it really depends on the tea. Um, you know, white teas I might get out to eight steepings. Black tea is pushing out to 10 to 12. Uh, depending on the oolong can range, you know, from... I feel like I've been wasting tea my whole life, Yeah, man. exactly. So, I mean, to, just to put it into... Expe uh, for volume of water, I mean, you're looking at 5 grams. You, know, you can easily make about a liter of tea out of it. So, you know, roughly, you know, 33 ounces or whatever. Hmm. Uh, Cody... Someone said, oh, background cat. Yeah, that's my cat, Luna, if you guys didn't know. Um, interesting fact about Luna. She likes hanging her head off of everything. So she looks like she's dead right now, but she just hangs her head. She'll be there all day, by the way. <laughs> it, yeah, she looks weird. Um, okay, uh, Cody says, if you want to talk about deep science and theoretical, uh, theoretical physics, we can live stream sometime. <laughs> Uh, I don't know anything about theoretical physics, um, but sure, we could chat. Uh, I think that's all the questions. Oh, this one guy said that you, he, he said he called you, a, a, the Don called you a tea master. I wouldn't go that far. I am. We should use that hashtag, dude. Who Way down the list of tea master. No, if you put that on your Instagram, the tea master, that would be really, I think that's a good way to kind of i don't know set you apart a little bit yeah i think i might get dinged by all the other t people who are way more knowledgeable than i am <laughs> no it, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a tough crowd <laughs> is it kind of like cigars where you're not you're never um it's never enough or you there's there's just levels and people think they're on a better level or uh possibly i mean one thing that's really holding me back is I don't speak Chinese and I can't right. read Chinese. <laughs> so right, mean, right. that's going to be a huge problem, especially when you're dealing with a lot of these nuanced um, uh, uh, teas. Because, you know, just from various, I can't read the wrappers on the poor. You know, I can, I can do my best and hopefully use Google Translate to get as much information off of it as I can. Um, mm -hmm. but I can only do so much. Um, since I don't go to China and I don't deal with the, that stuff, it's not going to be a huge deal for me. Um, and 
but one thing about uh, one thing about poor is you really have to be careful of fakes. So you do have to, you know, just like Cuban cigars, there's lots of fakes out there. Um, there are for the higher end um, poors as well. I mean, if if a cake's gonna cost six thousand dollars, somebody's gonna try to fake it um, and try to fake the labels and all that fun stuff to to make a buck off of a fifteen dollar cake. You know, so Jeez. scam. I thought I could rechange my rescale output. I guess I can't while I'm streaming. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So that's yeah, that's one thing to is a problem. You just you need to make sure you find quality dealers that uh, right. You where know, do reputable. you buy your where? Where do you recommend? So uh, top of my list is Unon Sourcing. Uh, it's run by a guy named Scott. I believe his last name is Wilson. Um, he's uh, American now, living in China. He um, started it in the early 2000s, and because there weren't really any Western-facing companies in China selling to uh, the Western market, so he started wow. he started sourcing stuff, and and people wanted you know various teas, so he ended up making a business out of it. Um, and now he is probably one of the biggest Western facing, if not the biggest Western facing sites with a very high reputation. Uh, and like I said, they started producing their own, uh, poor cakes, um, about you know, uh, seven, eight years ago. So they have some very good stuff under their own brands and, uh, uh, very, um, uh, huh. affordable, especially when you're buying in current or just previous year. Um, as they start getting older, they start going up in price. But I just switched you over to, um, you probably can't see this, but the background, I put <laughs> the website, and I'm, I'm scrolling through, and I just can't believe there's so many... Uh, I, I, I don't even know where to start. This yeah, is kinda their crazy. selection is massive. For, for just poor, they probably have at least 600 different poors um, from different factories, different producers. Um, it, yeah, this is just a huge variety. They also have a, they source a ton of fresh teas. They buy direct from the far, a lot of farmers. So, and you're getting direct off the plantation. Uh, they work with a lot. So, um, a lot of their teas may not necessarily be labeled or certified organic, but they work mm -hmm. with a lot of their supply, a lot of their farmers to grow um, with you know uh, environmentally friendly needs and all uh, uh, means and all that stuff. They also do chemical testing on their teas, and they test for like the levels of what? you know 192 different you know chemicals that they could find to make sure that they aren't you know you know the the tea producers are not lying about the fertilizers or pesticides that they're using wow yeah this is blowing me okay there is a cake on here it's a 13 year aged bamboo coin raw pu'er tea of de hong yeah is it what that's 24 dollars for one cake how big is it what how oh what's the um, gram size they're usually like yeah, three, me... they're usually like 357 is pretty normal you'll get 100 and 200 gram cakes too and 400 and 500 gram cakes oh okay uh this it's just not too bad it's a bundle of 15 coins which equals 150 grams oh okay yeah so that's not that's not that expensive oh no 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 i just i, I thought one of those coins one yeah, of those yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So each one is ten grams. I thought ten grams for twenty four dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there are probably the. I'm pretty sure there is tea on their site that is twenty four dollars for ten gram sample. Wait a minute. Yeah. How do I search for that? Where's the most expensive? That's oh, this is kind of know. intriguing me. Yeah, I would probably go if you go under the poor, you go to Monghai and you go to the oldest date that they have. The oldest date is kind of like whiskey. Yeah, it's probably going to be the most expensive. They're going, they're going to get expensive. Um, Forty-five dollar for a gift box. Yeah, I mean that's not even that bad. I mean, I'm two hundred, dude, two hundred and sixty-five dollars for a nineteen ninety CNNP aged ripe pu'er. Yeah, and that's not even that expensive, especially for a nineteen ninety, and it's a ripe. It's it's a ripe, so it's not going to be as coveted as a raw. This is the year I was born. Oh my gosh. 
So it it does it it just keeps oxidizing or does it is does it I mean so does it's it not work really or? an oxidization it's more like how um, you know pipe tobacco goes through the enzymes eventually you know it's it's enzyme activity more than oxidation okay. um, yeah. they just break down I got down. some out here yeah yeah I was trying to show people actually that's why I brought it because that's the only thing I can really compare it to but I made my own pipe tobacco and. Over time, it's kind of, it's not breaking down. Well, maybe it's breaking down. It's almost like fermenting more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, with, with pipe tobacco, you have the, the enzymes, you have the aerobic activity that uses up all the oxygen in the jar, and then you have the anaerobic activity that uh, runs without oxygen, and that's kind of, right. that's kind of the, the type of aging you want to happen. So, you know, once right. you jar it, it's like you want to keep it closed for a long time because... It takes about a year for the oxygen to be used up, and then, you know, after that, the anaerobic activity starts. But if you open the jar, you have, you reset that all up. So, you know, you gotta, right, you got to deal with that. So, if you uh, if you're gonna age, if you're gonna purposely age stuff, you definitely want to keep your jars closed and not check on them, not play with them, and you're gonna be going, you know, minimum of two years if you want some decent aging, or if it's a Virginia or something. I mean, you're talking like seven years sitting on You're right it. yeah do you like the the do you prefer um like a super i know some guys who go oh, okay i prefer you know two years after i buy it i mean it's already aged in the tin a little bit but yeah well, it can be depends on the producer obviously you know when you're yeah. looking at things like esoterica they're yeah. they're going to be perfect right when you get them because they've already right. been aged optimally um but still uh, if you've ever had like a a ten year age Penzance or something, it's still good. The lots of keys right. dropped off. Um, it's not nearly as smoky, <laughs> but since it's such high quality leaf, it's still really nice. Um, as far as aging goes, yeah, it depends. Uh, lots of Kia based blends. Uh, I like to hold on to them for at least two years before I open them. Um, that's just general. If it's if it's esoterica, I, I'm not, I won't wait. They'll, they'll be fine. Or um, Samuel Gowith, same thing. Uh, they're they're good right right off the bat. They're cr they have a lot of crystally uh, crystalline structures on them, and yeah. that's how I know just from a visual standpoint. I don't know if a lot of people do this, but I go, oh, this has plume or crystals. I know it's ready to go. Yeah. Um, and but then some of the the other producers, uh, you know, uh, well, McClellan's gone, but <laughs> C and D. Yeah. You know, those I'll sit on for uh, two years before I open them. Um, but yeah, so so really kind of the really high-end producers are usually good. Um, but just because I have such a backlog, I end up sitting on them for two or three years anyways. <laughs> yeah, uh, I got a whole closet over there. It's I don't really smoke a lot of pipes. Yeah, I'm I mean, more of a cigar guy. Oh, but... uh, over here, you know, that that's just a partial of it. But I got, you know, like... 140 unopened tins right now. So. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. Do you have a favorite, like an overall favorite pipe tobacco or? Um, I'd say Esoterica Penzance is probably my favorite. Yeah. Um, it's good, uh, fresh, you know, in a fresh shipment or it's good 10 years old. So I actually mm -hmm. have a bag that I bought in 2011 that I'm going to open up soon. <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I have that. See. I see a few different uh, esotericas. Yeah, I see. Yeah, that, I have. I can't um, read it. Maybe it says Margate. I can't tell. Yeah, I have Mar. Up up there, I have Margate and Soda Bed, uh, Stonehaven, Penzance, um, but I also have um, a few things of Dorchester. I got a few things of Dunbar. Um, what else I got? I got a couple things of Scarborough, and one of Birmingham or something like that. Bring them. Bring them. Bring in 10, I haven't so. even heard of those those last two. Scarborough is a uh, is a straight Virginia. Actually, so is um, Brigham Ten or something like that. Uh, they're both uh, straight Virginias. One is basically mm -hmm. all Scarborough's all yellow Virginias, maybe mm. with a little red in it, uh, and then uh, the other one has some, I think, some Stowe Virginia in it as well. Huh. But I, yeah. I've managed to uh, I've managed to lock into some esoterica. I wouldn't say I've been 
pretty all my esoterica has been lucky finds just walking into a walking yeah. into a brick and mortar and be like Ooh, all right i'm gonna buy you out of all your esotericas you know no before it was um i remember seeing it was a bag of some it was some esoterica blend uh, blend and it was a little cigar shop by my college and they were like they didn't know what to do with it because no one knew anything about it no one cared and looking back i'm like if I, well, if I had if I had the money, I would have just bought all of it because right. I can never find it now. And I see the, the only esoteric blends I've, I've I've actually received are from fans or from friends. So it, it's just kind of like a pain in the butt. But yeah, you have to be on the lookout and you have to be scouting it to actually get it, especially online because yeah. it's gone within ten minutes of it hitting hitting stores. Um, so brick and mortars tend to be the best bet, especially because I think. They purpose, purposely ship to brick and mortars first before shipping mm-hmm. to online retailers. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I, people always ask me, what's my favorite? And I always tell them, I think this is overall my favorite. Have you heard of this before? Yes. I have a tin of it. I haven't opened it yet. <laughs> um, I've bought, okay, so I've, I think this is my fifth tin. And I've noticed it tastes way better fresh out of the tin than my my age stuff that I've got. This has kind of been open for like a year or more. Um, so I'm assuming that just means I like the topping maybe. I don't know. But um, it's it's really good. I think it's actually a replica of a, of an older brand. Uh, Fusilier. I can never say it right. Um, Fusilier's ration. But I forget if it's a – I think it's a remake of an old blend. I forget what. I am not sure, but yeah, I think you are correct. I think that line was all right around right. the same time as the people trying to recreate uh, Bulk and Sobrani. Yeah, I think the White Knight is a recreation, I believe. Yeah. So all of the all of the Marquee series from Hearth and Home are recreations, and actually all of them are. I mean, I've actually never had the originals, but they're all pretty good. These are actually, you know, very good pipe tobaccos, I think. Um, but yeah, this people ask me what like what what do you like about this? I'm like I don't know. I it just has a sort of like a star anise kind of hint of flavor and uh, just a kind of a balanced blend. But yeah, that's what I this is like, this is my go to right here. Yeah, my uh, I, I'd say my go to just because Penzance is expensive. <laughs> right. Uh, would be uh, C and D's pirate cake. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a huge, had... I'm a huge Latakia guy. So you know, 75 percent Latakia, I'm, I'm down with that. <laughs> I, I, sh- I should send you. I've got whole leaves of, of Latakia that I don't know. I mean, I, maybe I could just make something with it. But I'm like, it's really, it's actually surprisingly good, but just by itself. Mm-hmm. I, I bet it you, is. You could actually just smoke it by itself, and. Uh, You'd be like, wow, this. I mean, this this is ninety percent there. Like, maybe maybe I would add like a little bit of Virginia, like a red Virginia, maybe, or I don't know what to it. But I would add. Did you get it from whole? Uh, did you get it from leaf only? Yes. I would. I have on hand um, their semi oriental. I don't know five, four, five, six. I think that's what it's called. That is so good, and I bet it would go awesome with Latakia. So I think really? that with a little, with a splash of Virginia would be great. <laughs> yeah, my um, my the first ever English tobacco I had was from I I didn't know anything about pipes, and it was uh it was from Samuel Galwith. It was called uh, Commonwealth um, blend or mixture, and it's fifty percent Latakia, fifty percent. Virginia and I was like, man, this is pretty darn good. Like I, in my head, I thought I didn't need to explore anymore. Um, but have you have you ever tried Commonwealth or? I have not. Um, it's I guess it's pretty bold because coming from cigars, pipes are generally kind of mild. So if people are like watching and you're watching and you're like, hey, I'm into cigars, I would recommend yeah a, a heavier English for a lot of guys just because they're definitely they're used to, yeah. yeah going from cigars. I think. I think cigar smokers enjoy English tobaccos more than anything yeah. else. Yeah, for sure. People are like, well, what do you recommend? I'm like, just, it's cheap. So just buy like a bunch of English, a, you know, a, a few different aromatics. And I always say just buy a corn cob pipe because they're $10. Um, yeah. Um, as far as I, I see uh, in your, somebody is asking what would be the best way to start smoking pipes. Um, if, if you go to my channel, I have a how to smoke pipe how to smoke a pipe video. Um, but, um, 
I stray from the advising your first pipe to be a corn cob. Um, oh, you I, do. Yes, I know that's I know that's a uh, a uh, contentious point. Yeah. To some people. Um, well, it's. It, I've okay. So I've had I have like five corn cobs. Two of them, I love, and the rest are just eh, like for they just they're mostly for show. Um, but why? Yeah, I want. I'm curious. Why do you? Why do you recommend that? So, one, smoking a pipe is a bit of a trick. <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly as straightforward as cigars. So, my advice is, the advice I give is to give a new pipe smoker the best chance of succeeding. Mm-hmm. So I usually. What I recommend is get a semi decent briar, um, you know, somewhere in the eighty dollar range. You know, you're looking at Peterson's, Savinelli, you know, something like that, something something around eighty to ninety dollars. Right. And then one thing about that, if you want to give up pipe smoking, you can turn around and resell that pipe right. for probably seventy five percent of what you paid for it. So on eBay, yeah. So you're not going to be out a ton of money if you hate it, and if you like it, you have a decent pipe to start with. Um, so, and then with cobs, I think they require, one thing I don't like about cobs is usually the draft hole is way too open. That's why I was going to, I was going to talk about that. Yes. Is it the same, is is that the same critique you have about them? That's what I tell people, get a corn cob. And then I have a, it's a company, they're called a Walker Briar Works and they make stems specifically for the you know the corn cob pipe the missouri yeah. mearson corn cob pipe my cat wants attention and um and so that has completely solved everything that i don't like about um corn uh, corn cob pipe what do you want cat yeah and um so i you know it's like an extra 15 20 dollars but for 30 dollars then all of a sudden you have a nice cool smoke that's not too drafty or you know yeah so I so. so that's why I, I tend to send people towards a, a half decent briar to start with. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So so probably, that's they're, right. They're not going to want to go out and buy a custom stem. Right. So yeah, to buy the two pieces. Um, yeah. So so you have that. I mean, I do have a ton of cobs just because I don't smoke aromatics, uh, you know, regularly, and mm-hmm. but I do review them. So I have a ton of cobs just for those. Um, right. Actually, my pipe rack is a little empty. My they're all on my need to clean rack. But really, all my briars are just dedicated to the top row is Latakia blends, uh, and the the bottom row is basically all the other uh, non aromatic. Mm-hmm. So Virginia vapors and Burleys um, all go in those. So. Yeah, do you want to explain? Um, a lot of my guys probably don't even know what a vapor is. Do you want? Um, sure. So or... a, a vapor is just a shorthand for uh, Virginia Perique. Um, mm-hmm. So VA for Virginia and PER for the Perique. Um, it's a very typical blend um, that is used. Uh, that's yeah. just going to be you know a lot of Virginia with some Perique mixed in. Um, so. Yeah, because I thought it was... I thought it was vape, vapor. <laughs> um, people were like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know what vaping... Like, they thought it was, like, something to do with the e-liquid or something, or they... I don't know. I was like, no, it's two different... It's Virginia Perique vapor. Yeah, a friend of yeah. mine's in uh, my chat saying uh, he's staring at a tiny tin of Penzance right now, which I gave to him. Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, not for first, maybe for second. When it coming to uh, corn cob pipes, same thing. He says it's just way too open. So yeah, yeah, that's the only. Um, I I have about five or six Chris Morgan pipes, and uh, he has the Bones series. Yeah. And what I do is I just about once a year I'll kind of like customize it, like I'll color one or I'll kind of rough it up a certain way. But they're like thirty to forty dollars, and they're pretty decent. Like. I mean, they're real. I think it's Algerian briar or whatever everyone uses. They're just not yeah. perfect pieces of wood. They're, yeah, they're not perfect. They have imperfections. Yeah. And, 
but they still have all the same smoking characteristics. Um, yeah, yeah, and, that's a that's a that's a good way to go. They're a bit cheaper, I believe. I bet I think the bones pipes are somewhere in the forty to fifty dollar range. Yeah, and I I love the weird goofy shapes and sizes. Yeah. And so if you guys are just starting out, yeah, check out Chris Morgan Pipes or dot com or something like that. Yeah, if you if you Google bones pipes, you'll you'll find them. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, that'd be a good starter as well. I, yeah, I, I can this definitely actually, get on board with that. This is my favorite pipe I wanted to show you. I don't know if you've seen me smoke this. Probably. And it is, and it's called an Irwin's Second. And I looked it up. I think that has something to do with, I don't know. I think it was a second of a KBB or a KKK pipe. I forget what they call what they're called. Yeah, there are but, some there are some pipes where actually the uh, People don't know that the line is actually seconds of a larger line, right? So, so, so like Roma, second... like Roma are the seconds of Savinelli. Really? Okay. Yeah. So I don't know what it is, but this is a super lightweight um, sort of. I don't know what what would you call this shape? It's sort of billiard, but it's kind of the stem is ovular. I'd still um, call it a billiard. Okay, because some people I've no I've I've heard call this like a it's like pushing a weird can... Liverpool. It's pushing Canadian because of how long the stem is. Oh, you froze. Where, what happened? Oh, it's pushing Canadian. Yeah, it's almost yeah. like Canadian. It's like Canadian Liverpool. What's, what's a Liverpool? Is that I don't know. similar? <laughs> I think it's similar to a Liverpool. I don't know. But this is my favorite. I don't know why. It just has this sort of light, good mouthfeel. I don't have many light cigars. They're pretty much all, I mean, light cigars, uh, light pipes. <laughs> They're all pretty much massive. So I got like this bad boy. I was smoking while I was talking to you a couple days ago. Um, that thing is huge. It is. It is ginormous. I actually got this. is actually a hearth and home. Um, I actually got this for free because my international pipe smoking order a couple years ago, like, never made it to me, and like apparently they never shipped it because oh. because they were going through a bunch. They were going through a system transition right as international pipe smoking. I don't know if you remember this or not. I do. Uh, yeah, so so I find I contacted them and they're like, oh crap. Okay, all right. They found my they found my order. They got my order. They're like, hey, what what kind of what shape pipes do you like? I'm like, oh, I like you know bent uh, <laughs> Dublins or straight Dublins or anything. They're like, okay. Um, and then they also sent me a couple more tobaccos as well with the order. So they they more than made up for the problem with the shipping by sending me, you know, this brand spanking new huge. I, I said I like big chunky pipes. So like we can do that. Um, <laughs> so they got they got me this big huge pipe for free with a couple of tobaccos. So they they more than corrected the problem at least for me. So I have not had any problems with pipes and cigars since then. I know some people don't like them, but. They 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 took care of me when they messed up. So, have you seen those uh, Mr. Brogs? Those are kind of big. Yeah, like especially like the Morta. Um, mm -hmm. They have a huge um, Morta line that <laughs> it looks like a tiny little hole inside this chunk of wood. It's pretty funny. Actually, I got to show you one that I got. Yeah, show me. So this. It's not a brog. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Okay. So, Surprising. I had, I bought, um, when I first started smoking a pipe, I found a, I found a small little pipe rack in an antique shop, a massive antique shop when I lived in Columbus, Ohio. There's some huge antique shops, so you have to look for a very long time to find stuff. Anyways, I found a little pipe stand. It was probably like a five holder pipe stand. It's actually shaped like a, uh, I even remember what it was shaped like. It was shaped like the wheel of like a pirate ship. <laughs> <laughs> and um, on it was uh, a Peterson Dublin, a GBD Dublin, and a uh, Camoys. Um, I got all three of those for $28 total. So that was awesome. So anyways, I didn't really like the Camoys. It was kind of just a fat squat, like uh, I don't even know what you want to call it. Uh, anyways, it just had like a really long stem, but the bowl was super small. Anyway, so I traded it away, and what I got in return was this thing. <laughs> oh my lord! 
Is so that a free hand? What is that thing? So it it's basically just a freaking block of wood, <laughs> you know. So this is oh. this is a, a an Ehrlich. Um, they were a uh, tobacco shop based out of Boston. Um, they closed somewhere in like the early '90s or late '80s. So this thing's probably at least 25, 30 years old. Um, but it is. I mean, look how massive honking this thing is, and it just weighs a ton. And I love it. <laughs> what, what do they call that? Like a jawbreaker, or there's a, there's a name for heavy pipes? Oh yeah, I, I could see it being called a jawbreaker. So yeah, <laughs> so that's just one of my massive pipes. And have you heard of Tim West? No, who's Tim West? Tim West. He's a uh, he's a he is like one of the premier American freehand style pipe makers. Um, I'm not sure if he's still act. He's probably pretty old right now. Um, he, uh, lived just North of Columbus. Um, that was just coincidence that I happened to live there at one point. Um, but anyways, he, he was kind of like the premier American freehand maker. So I always wanted one. Somebody on the forums posted that they had one for sale a couple Christmases ago. So I had to buy it. It was only a hundred bucks and this is the bad boy and it is freaking massive. So what th this and the, the bowl heck? is huge. This thing can probably take, man, it takes forever to smoke this bad boy. But it is Dude. probably one of my favorite pipes, and it's got this nice twisted pattern, you know, right. What in the, the he, heck? Yeah, he, if you search him on eBay or just search him in general, Tim West, he okay, makes. Okay, I'm gonna look this up for the audience here. Yeah, he makes some huge and amazing freehand pipes. So I had to get one of him. So he was really one of the only makers that I really had to get um, mm -hmm. because I really loved his stuff. Um, Let me show people. I'm going to switch right. Okay. Uh, so they can see you and me. And let me see if I, I got to move your picture here. <laughs> um, I got to unlock you. Then I can move you over on top of me. Okay, let me go into what in the okay. Oh, it's just showing Peterson. Okay, um, Tim West pipe. Tim West, yeah. Uh, but he is um, similar to. He's not as crazy as the Boswell boys, <laughs> making yeah. pipes that <laughs> he could take three tins of tobacco in him. Um, but he just made really nice. He also made you know some normal style stuff too. But he really kind of specialized in free hands, um, mm -hmm. and he was kind of like one of the huge American guys who started. You know, uh, he he's one of the places. I think he's one of the first places you could start getting pipe making materials and stuff too. If I'm if I'm not wow. wrong on that one, but he does. He makes some very cool free hands. Um, I don't know how what? old he is now, but. Probably. These are really interesting looking here. Yes, they, he makes some very, very cool pipes. Um, they're actually not that expensive. They're only like seventy bucks. Yeah, that yeah, that's one of the things. He's not exactly as well known as um, who's that guy? El Tang or no? Uh, El something. He's got the really unique. I always see Dagner smoking them. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know who else. Specifically, other than the Boswells, oh man, they make some crazy Boswells. pipes. Boswells. Boswell makes crazy pipes. I need to get one of those. I think that's the other maker at this point that I have to at least get one of theirs. And I don't care if it's Jim or the Sun. I forget the Sun's name. Yeah, though. right now they're more. They're probably more known for their actual tobacco blends. But yeah, maybe. I mean, their pipes are insane. They make some honking pipes. <laughs> I mean, have uh, you ever seen the pipes that are really like the bowl is literally a foot tall? No, I haven't. Oh what? man, they make they basically take the entire burl and will make the biggest oh. pipe they can out of it. It's Jeez. insane. They call them like extra, 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 extra Magnus, <laughs> you know, whatever. It's they, really weird. What I I don't see a lot of their stuff. I see when I'm searching for them, I see some Costellos and older older things, but they don't have a lot for sale right now. On, on eBay, anyway. Who? Boswell or Tim West? Bo Boswell. Yeah, the, it is only usually about four or five that you can find on there at any given time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is kind of a cool-looking one. 
A 1950s Costello. I bet that's uh, not a uh, cheapo. Yeah, hey, guess the price. How big is it, and what shape is it? It is called a Sea Rock Briar, and it's used, and obviously there's lots of oxidization on the on the stem there um because it's it looks like it's it looks like it hasn't been smoked but they didn't do like any restoration or anything i'm gonna put it in the 450 range well you it might go that high it's you got well it's 250 dollars right now and we have an hour left yeah not too far off uh peter in your chat says i was away from the states for a year any cigars that came out i need to try i don't know what's come out in the past year to be honest so i couldn't Uh, tell you yeah well okay what what was the thing we were talking about um rose of sharon oh yes Um, the southern draw cigar yeah. yeah So, like, I keep hearing about a few different cigar. Like, I'm kind of out of the cigar world a little bit. And so, but that's Southern Draws, Rose of Sharon. I've been hearing about this everywhere. Um, so if you, I think that's definitely one to check out. Um, if, you know, if you if you like the, like, for a lot of people, they, they like to ride, like, the, the buzz, like, the wave. Um, and so that's definitely one I would consider because, yeah. And I, whatever, um, I, I just saw one, it's called... It's called like the Hulk cigar or something like that from, from um, uh, Tim. No, no, Brad. Brad has his new company called Zeal Cigar Company. Zeal Team Six. He's got a weird triple barber pole, and I was like, I would try that. It's six dollars. It's got a green like candela looking leaf, some sort of like Colorado leaf, and another like it has three different colors, and it actually looks pretty good. So. Cool. I would be interested just to, just just for fun. Like that looks like one of those cigars that you'd say, "Look what I got," you know. But I don't know how good it is for six dollars. So, <laughs> let's see here. Yeah, where I wonder where Pete was if he was out of the states. By the way, I I I switched from well, I was I was thinking tea, but then I saw this and I was like, I should try this. This is Jameson's. Uh, Castmates Stout Edition. Have you ever tried this stuff? I don't like alcohol, so I don't drink it. <laughs> you, no, not even a little bit? No. Well, I don't have anything I, against it. I wish I liked it, but I don't. <laughs> so I just stick with my tea. There's well, plenty to explore in tea, so I'm good. Yeah, I was going to say, if you ever do, consider uh, an Irish whiskey because they're really mild and they're super easy to drink. Um, and yeah, you might, you, yeah, I never thought I would like it, but I, I you know, it turns out I do. <laughs> so let's see, I keep going back to the, oh, uh, Peter was in Japan. Uh, let's see here. I think we got, oh, there's only two people watching. Man, there's not a lot. We should get more. I think it's because it's probably glitchy and then probably the... Yeah, I had were... I had a sharp drop. I think something might have happened. I had uh, all at one time, I had three people drop off all right at the same time. So there might be a slight glitch that we're dealing with at the moment. Well, and I think too what happens is it takes like 30 minutes for people to like get on. Yeah. And then they and then they watch for like 10 minutes and then they go. So I'm like, okay, how do I maybe we should like plan like the like the best or the you know what like I guess the most important or the funnest or the best part we should plan for like 30 minutes to maybe keep the retention. I don't know. I think a lot of people come back and watch later too. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Peter fr- Peter the guy who wanted to know, he said he's smoking a Monte Cristo number 2. Mm-hmm. Which, if you guys don't know, that's kind of, for a lot of people, that's kind of like the benchmark. You know, that's kind of, I don't know, like the BMW of cigars. Like, it's kind of, it's a lot of people's go-to, you know. It's not the Ferrari, but it's not the Pinto either. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say it's like the best, but you know what? Like, it's almost always in those Cigar Aficionado magazines. It's it's certainly, if you have an aged one, it's very good. A lot of time, um, it's always the Cubans that are in there, though. Yeah, and not necessarily you... uh, the uh, yeah. Dominic- the, I think they're based at the the ones for the U.S. market are based at Dominican Republic. Yeah, yeah, all of those, um, the Cohibas, 
and uh, Monte Cristo's and the Punch and all of those. Those are all Dominican. Um, and I think they're Altadis or General Cigar, one of the two, maybe both. I believe Altadis has them. Yeah. Altadis, yeah. I know Altadis has uh, Monte Cristo, Romeo e Julieta, and um, oh crap, what was the last one? H. Upman. Yeah. I know all those are Altadis. Um, I assume Cohiba is probably in that too. Um, have you? Had, but Cohiba actually released a Nicaraguan puro. Yes, I haven't tried it. It um, is so good. <laughs> really, I'm gonna it, have to look. It is really that. good. I don't know if you ever had. Have you ever had the uh, Partega Spanish risotto or risotto? No. Oh, they're hard to. I, I'm pretty sure they were discontinued. You might be able to still find them. They're really good. I, I, they're very similar to that. If anybody's ever had that. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to adjust your screen here. Uh, for whatever reason, it just keeps changing. So we got you. We got me. Okay, side by side. Um, I, th- I think I we both. I think we both need to uh, call our cable providers and be like, we need a little bit more upstream. <laughs> yeah, well, I pay ninety bucks, and I think I told you I pay ninety dollars for ninety uh, megs. Do you, do you say megs? Yeah, ninety, ninety, ninety. Yeah, the megs uh, down. You got 90, 90 megs down. Yeah, and you told me, I did not know this, you're downloading that, the, the maximum could be 90 if you're plugged in. I'm using Wi-Fi, so it's cut in half, and then you, I did not know this, but the upstream, the uploading is like nine and a half. Right. And I'm like, that's just crazy to me that you think you're paying, not for $90, which is one of the highest ones, you, you would think you would get, you know, much closer to what it, you know, I don't know. That's just my my grief. Oh, one um, at my so my friend said CAO Cameroon Rocky Patel nineteen ninety nineteen ninety two. Those are among both of our favorites. Um, yes, actually the nine the nineteen ninety um, was one of my first premium cigar. I bought like a five pack. Actually, and, mine too. Yeah, and um, I swear because that's my that's my that's the year I was born. So I had a weird <laughs> sentimental thing with it, you know. Um. And I bought a five pack or a ten pack, and I swear they were better back then than they are now. I don't know why, but um, that's just my. I don't know if they were actually grown in 1990 or what. But so the the filler was relatively new as the wrapper that was from 1990 at the time of release. Mm-hmm. Um, so they've kept the age. So they're still aged, you know, like 12 years or whatever for the 1990 mm-hmm. and 10 for the 1992s. Mm-hmm. Um, just obviously the wrapper is grown. Well, now if they're making them, they're grown in 2007, no. you know, 2007, right. 2009. Right. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah. I, they've definitely changed. Um, obviously cause it, you know, tobacco is a natural product. So you are going to get some variations over time. Um, so it is what it is. Uh, have you seen that Rocky Patel actually released a vintage 1979 the wrapper was grown what? in 79. I'm looking this up. Yeah. It's, I'm guessing it's going to be a limited release because I don't think he's going to have a standard uh, stream of 40-year-old wrapper coming in. I'm looking this up here. Okay. People can see my screen. Okay. Let me go back. Uh, let me go to Cigars International. He has a million lines. This is my only gripe about Rocky Patel. Yes, he got me into the cigar industry a little bit, but it's... I, I wonder if quality is kind of diminished with more brands, and I've heard other people make stuff for him, so it's just his name. Yeah, not- I think it. I think it really depends on the line, his higher end lines, the, yeah. the, all the vintage, um, and all the numbered. So the 10, 15, 20 year, twenty five year old world. Um, those are all going to be the higher end, and they're all going to be produced. The quality is still going to be there. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, they test they test draw every cigar before they wrap it. You know, hmm. so they have all that all that taken care of. So usually, you're not going to get a plug cigar or anything like that. Um, right. But yeah, I do. Once you you are going to start losing quality once you aren't watching stuff as much as possible. I know, I know he pays attention to those higher end lines especially like the old world and whatnot, especially because the old world's right. kind of considered one of his best ever. Um, right, 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 they right. had to delay, they had to delay production on the old worlds for quite a long time because he wasn't happy with 
with how the um, uh, the the aging of the tobacco was going. So they they had to stop making them for like eight months while they continued to uh, pile the pile and ferment the tobacco. So it's kind of weird because they come in these like fifteen size boxes. Yeah. Which norm- normally you see like 20, 25. Oh, you're talking 15. about the 1979s? Yeah, yeah, it actually looks pretty good. It's a Cameroon, which yeah. I'm a huge fan of Cameroon. Me too. Uh, let's see here. That's what I put on my own personal blend is the Cameroon yeah, wrapper. They're all back ordered. Well, the Robusta's not back ordered. Yeah. You can buy a box of 15 for $180. So that would, that's, they're actually pretty expensive. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's just a limited release. Probably won't be a... Probably will not yeah. be uh, making too many more of those. But but you know what? They look they look pretty good. Like, people can be uh, snooty or whatever. I would say Rocky Patel is the reason, uh, and uh, for a lot of people, why the cigar industry is the way it is, you know? like I th- Yeah, he's uh, definitely the one, one of the ones who brought it back from... Yeah, from the crash after the '90s in the late '90s. Yeah, they called it like the golden age of cigars, or um, there's a lot of different names, but there's just a uh, flood of brands that came in in the '90s. Yeah. Um, let's see here. I've got my my uh, machine here. I don't know. Here's the problem with coffee: is I can't drink it at night because then I'll be up all night. <laughs> you need something oh. that's uh, low caffeine. You can get some uh, get some. Um, Get a show my cake, and uh, you'll be good to go. Show my cake. Show my. Yeah. Um, so it's white. It's white tea. It's made with older leaf. Um, so it's made. First, they come through and pick the uh, by mudan, which is also called white peony. They usually pick the bud and first two leaves, uh, and then they come back through and pick the third and fourth leaf, and that goes into the show my cake. Wait, what? 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 What is peony? I, I've heard. I've heard that word a few times. That's just. That's just the English. It's. It's by Mudan, and for some reason it translates or is called white peony, on the way. Huh. You know, in English or whatever. Um, so English, you usually hear, hear it called white peony, but it's by Mudan. Um, huh. So they'll come through. They'll pick the bud and the first two leaves, uh, and then they'll go back through and pick uh, leaf four, uh, three and four, and the, that will go into the shomai. Huh, wow. So they're they're only picking those leaves because they are that's considered uh the most flavorful for peony or or it's the higher grade cuz you know the younger the leaf the more tender and usually considered higher grade it is. Um, okay. the older the leaf the the tougher it is and all that so it's considered a lower grade leaf. Um, so when you're buying like Lipton or something, it's probably the lowest grade. Lipton, uh, Lipton, they're they're going to be growing on huge plantations. Um, they're going to be grown. Um, you know, the the bushes are all going to be trimmed to be a uniform size and height mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And then they're just going to come through with a uh, a weed whacker and take off. It's all machine picked, so it's not <laughs> it's not hand picked. They're not they're not. Um, Picky. There's not some American guy like, okay, second leaf. Right, exactly. They're not exactly picky about what comes off uh, of the uh, tree. So they really come through with a machine and just trim what they trim, and that's what they mm-hmm. use for, for the, the tea. Um, huh. And then obviously it's shredded to hell, so you'd never know where it came from on the plant anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huh, interesting. So yeah, yeah. all this stuff, a lot of the... So yeah, that's what you're going to see on like the big commercial plantations and whatnot. And then you'll have um, you know kind of the the higher quality plantations that they still might prune, but they're going to be hand picked. Um, so they're going to be p- making they're be going to be picking specifically to the buyer. So the buyer might want the first bud and the, the bud and first leaf, or depending on what they're making. Um, oh, hey, wait a minute. Uh, sorry, I, Mark just sent twenty dollars. Nice. Well, that was a while ago, I guess. I just wasn't looking. <laughs> hey, Mark, if you're still watching, thank you very much. Well, maybe I can buy some some good tea now. 
Yeah, so they'll they'll pick based on what the uh, what the buyer wants for the most part. Mm-hmm. So, um, let's see. Oh, yeah. What, what about tea? I know it's not really tea, uh, but what are some good herbal teas maybe to help sleep? I think you had some suggestions yesterday. Yeah. So for herbal teas, I don't really drink them unless I'm sick. <laughs> right. Um, obviously, you have the standard like chamomile and whatnot, um, which is fine for sleep. Um, even like the was it the celestial seasoning season celestial seasoning season sleepy time tea is fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, there's nothing really wrong with it. Um, but for like when I'm sick, um, my personal will be equal parts by volume of rooibos, mullein, skullcap, and eucalyptus leaf. Um, it's just what I like when I'm sick. It's kind of got a little bit of that effervescence to loosen everything up, but um, the skull cap kind of makes you sleepy as well. Same with the mullion, I believe. Um, so it kind of acts as a bit of a expectorant and a and a. I'm gonna have to look aid. that up. <laughs> skull, skull cap. So skull cap. Yeah. If people are not aware, um, I'm trying to think. Where would they buy it? skull cap? Tea, maybe? Uh, skull cap you can find at any uh, health food store or co op. Uh huh. Um, Frontier has it, so any place that carries Amazon. like the Frontier stuff in bulk, you'll you'll find skull huh. cap there. Um, it looks like they're it looks like they're advertising for anxiety too. Yeah. Some people um, the desert skull cap, um, which usually is not what you get from like Frontier and whatnot is considered really good and actually people will smoke it <laughs> for, for yeah, anxiety frontier, frontier co-op skull cap herb certified organic you could smoke that yeah but usually this the stuff from like frontier is not the desert skull cap is considered the the best for for smoking uh, um but uh what? the stuff you get from frontier is not usually desert skull cap so desert skull cap is a little harder to get um but you so can frontier. find it yeah, Frontier. What is Frontier? Just a distributor? Or? Frontier. Uh, no, Frontier. Um, I don't know if you have them out where you are. Uh, we. I see them everywhere at like co-ops and whatnot for bulk herbs and uh-huh. spices. They they they're basically a herb and spice company. Um, but really? usually it's in the it's like a bulk section where they'll just have like you know they'll the co-op will buy it in pounds and then you can you know you can buy an ounce of it or whatever. So they, but they sell everything, sell... like juniper berries and pepper and salt and everything. Huh. Just like all regular food spices as well as some medicinal herbs. Yeah, they sell this thing called valerian root, which I'm assuming is for sleep too. Yes, valerian root, root is used for sleep. But they'll, so they maybe, sell everything. Yeah. They sell really should... all spices and herbs. Yeah. I'm thinking what I should do is like review all these things to help people with sleep because that's kind of like the slow direction I'm going in. Yep. V- valerian root, skull caps, maybe mint just because it's relaxing. I don't know. Yep. Uh, mullion. Mullion. Let me look that up. I'm not sure if that is a sleep aid or not. I can't remember. But you use it. It must be. I mean, if you're using it, it must be good. Mullion leaf tea. Yeah. I think it might be more of an expectorant than anything to help you loosen up all that phlegm and stuff. Yeah. How do you know this stuff? This is just mind-blowing to me. <laughs> okay. I read and I tend to retain quite a lot. <laughs> uh, this guy, he says, yeah, you're right. This guy uses it for chronic bronchitis and asthma. Helps him breathe better. Yep. Huh. So, uh... On my channel, someone says, new to the channel, don't know why. What's the guitar in the background? That's actually on James, so. Oh, okay. Um, yes, I play guitar. If you guys don't know. Oh, my timer went off because I'm smoking some salmon. Uh, <laughs> but it'll be fine. It's just sitting out there cold smoking. Um, let's see. Let me switch my view so you can see both of us better. Uh, yeah, so I play guitar. I play acoustic, electric. Um, I used to play in, like, church bands. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's been a while. I've, I've kind of just been busy and, um, but yeah, if you're interested, maybe I should show that more. I don't know. Over here, I got a big pedal board over here. So I have a lot of guitar effects and, 
if you're like if you are like a nerd like me that helps you play better because so, i'm not that i mean i'm good but that stuff over there helps me a lot better so well all right <laughs> yeah do, do you play any instruments uh i play guitar but i haven't played in so long it's just sitting in the closet look at this this cat is always in the shop it's a photo bomber yeah yeah so here's the problem with me right so i like guitar i like cigars i like pipes i like coffee uh here's a coffee machine right here um let me show people on this here's a coffee machine and and then um you know i like this so i like too many things and that's i'm not like a ma i'm a i'm a master of none so <laughs> i am the yeah. same way i just like way too many things and just have all types of stuff so yeah. yeah, and I and I love reviewing. I mean, I I started reviewing mattresses, so that's what we do now a lot, because um, you know a lot of people are like us. They're like they were young and they're like, what do I get? And um, we just bought a Zinus, which is like three hundred dollars. And I think you you said you bought it. Yeah, uh, we have the t memory foam twelve inch premium mattress. We've, yeah, we've had it for a year and a half, and we love it. It's awesome. Yeah, so one of my one of my friends was saying, "Hey, you gotta buy it. Just just go buy it." And I said, "I don't know. I got enough mattresses, but I, I ended up buying it." And I'm like, "This is, it, it's not the premium like yours, but for three hundred dollars, I'm thinking, man." Um, so that's why, like, I like doing this stuff. I'm like, maybe I could help someone get better sleep, or, I mean, who else has that many mattresses and you know that much knowledge on, the mattress world, I guess. Yeah, I like I like ours. I can't speak to the breathability though, because we have old dogs and we have a yeah. a nice thick <laughs> waterproof cover on there. So yeah, it gets a little sweaty at times because it's not very breathable. Just because I know that a dog is probably going to pee in bed, and actually one of them did pee in bed this yeah. afternoon. So yeah, <laughs> I always tell people get a protector because yeah, one I mean because it's essentially just a giant sponge. Right. So. Yeah, that too. You really can't get it out once it's in there. Um, I mean, you can sort of spot treat it, but... Yeah, our dogs are getting up in age, so... And what kind of dogs do you have? So, I have a Dachshund, and um, and my wife has a Chihuahua. So, uh... they're small, they can't jump off the bed, so they don't even jump Little... off the bed to pee on the floor or something. So, it's, it's going to end up on the bed if uh, somebody doesn't wake up to let them out in the middle of the night. Yeah, little wiener dog. My 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 aunt has um, uh, a little dog, and she actually gives it like little like I think they're like diapers. Yeah, and she just rips them off if we put them on. Yeah, so. <laughs> rips off a diaper. It looks like a real baby diaper. I think that's what it is. It's all right. She she's usually good at waking me up in the middle of the night, telling me that she has to go outside. But sometimes it's just nope. <laughs> nope. Yep. You know, um, you know, it's kind of a shame because like, what else do you do with your dog? I mean, they can't they get so my, my dog is a little mini poodle. She gets really scared. And so that's, um, you know, it's like, what else are you going to do with this? You can't let it sit outside. It'll be it'll be peeing in the carpet. So if it's in the bed, <laughs> she'll wake me up. So. Yeah, and if uh, we leave her in like the kennel or something, she'll just whine for hours, and it's like, oh, oh, oh. right. It's like, yes, I know yeah. you've been sleeping in bed with us since you were twelve weeks old, so you know, there's not right. a, you, you can't really teach a dog old new tricks at that point. Yeah, it's like, what are you gonna do at that point? You know, so she's kind of, she, she, you know, she's your baby then. Yeah, you know? she's all right. Usually she sleeps, she usually sleeps against either myself or my wife. Anyways, mm -hmm. so if she gets up, we usually wake up because we can feel her moving. So usually we can get her before uh, beforehand. She like and she sleeps under the covers, so she has to rustle the covers to get out from under those. So she makes enough movement usually. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wiener dog thing, I think. I think everybody's wiener dog sleeps under the blankets. I I wish I had a wiener dog. <laughs> <laughs> Just to say I have a wiener dog. Our chihuahua does that too, actually. He sleeps under the blankets. Did your, did your chihuahua shake a lot? Yes. Oh, so that's like a genetic thing or something. I don't know. Yeah, and it's not like he's cold. Because he, he can be right. standing in the sun 90 degrees outside and he still like shivers like, you know, once out, once every 30 seconds or whatever. Yeah. I've heard it's like a weird like genetic it's neurological just, thing. Yeah, it's just like a neurological tick. 
Yeah. And they're just prone to having it. He's and... 13, and nothing too bad has happened, so. He still runs around like a little, he looks like a little deer running around in the backyard. Nah. <laughs> What else do we talk about? I'm looking around my table of mess. On your table of mess? Yeah, it's just I just put a bunch of stuff and I just I don't put it away. And that's my problem. Here's a question: What do you do for your water? Uh, my water is terrible, absolutely terrible. So um, what I well here's what I used to do. Um, I used to mix half distilled and half filtered water, and I tested it once and it was pretty good for coffee. Um, is that what you're talking about for coffee and yeah. tea or yeah so I, I distilled is you know you, you can't really drink it um, but I, it, at least it brought down the hardness for the machine a little bit um, um, and then now and then what I was doing was just using it's called third wave water and it's a powder it's minerals that they've formulated like calcium and I'm, I think magnesium and then you just put that in distilled water shake it up let it dissolve and um, the only problem with that is it's you know you have to buy a lot of distilled water and it's it's actually just kind of a hassle. So so we just got a brand new um, refrigerator and the the filter on the refrigerator is it's not a, it's not perfect but that's kind of what I'm doing is just filtered refrigerated water. Um, and then what I do is I back flush the machine a lot more. Um, so it's it's not perfect if i was going to go perfect i would go with that third wave water packet with like the minerals but and use like um, rodi water yeah yep yeah. ro um yeah reverse osmosis right is that what that is yeah yeah so you can either use distilled or or rd water reverse or ro water rodi yeah R um, so, reverse so osmosis deionization Oh, so there's okay. a second cartridge after the after the reverse osmosis memory, and that snags anything that's left over. So I'm wondering, what is the difference between... So maybe reverse osmosis is passing through a bunch of filters, maybe? So rever reverse osmosis uh, passes through... Um, well, it passes through a reverse osmosis filter, but first it usually goes through a sediment filter and... Mm -hmm. Um, either two sediment filters and then a carbon block or sometimes you'll find systems that have a sediment filter and two carbon blocks before it gets to the, yeah. to the reverse osmosis uh, and then it passes through the reverse osmosis which rejects you know a good hunk of the water and right. allows only clean water to pass through and then the deionization cartridge the di resin will snag any leftover fine imp uh, impurities after that so, so we use that you, for our fish tank. So you can drink uh, our R O D I water, or R O water. You can drink that, like, but yes, I mean you can drink so it, distilled water too. Yeah, but it would pull, it would leach minerals from you. Well, not so, not so much. It's usually only if if that's all you ever drink. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Because as long as you have a normal diet. It, it's not going to make a difference of if oh, you're okay. drinking distilled water or anything like that. It's not going to take anything out because it's just it's just straight water. And if you're eating normal amounts of food, you're going to get all mm -hmm. those minerals anyways. Yeah, I was told, oh, you can't drink distilled water because it can mess up your pH level and, you know... Yeah. It's just, Which makes no, no sense minerals. because it's neutral. <laughs> so. Right, it's completely neutral. But I was told that you know because it doesn't have minerals, it's going to leach the minerals from your body, and it actually will make you dehydrated. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's that's only if you aren't eating a, a a normal diet. Right. And if you're making coffee out of it, you're gonna get all the minerals out of the coffee anyway. So you're already like remineralizing it to an extent with what's in the coffee. So. Well, when I did uh, reverse, when I did distilled water with just coffee, it tasted really. It was bad. It wasn't. It was flat. It probably yeah, exactly. It probably tasted flat. Yeah, and I guess the minerals when when you're extruding uh, espresso, uh, the minerals help leach the fla the flavonoids. I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. I mean, rever uh, RODI water doesn't taste that great because it is completely stripped of. Right. of all dissolved solids. So, um, yeah, it doesn't taste great. So Yeah, the calcium, the calcium and magnesium, I guess, give it that soft 
texture, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, the soft flavor texture, but if for your shower, it makes it feel hard. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. but yeah, I mean, um, you can reverse osmosis is fine. Um, and then a lot of people, a lot of drinking systems will run the, the finished water back through a carbon block again. Um, huh. and you'll pick up a few, you'll pick up some of the minerals out of the carbon block. Um, but that's about that's about it. Um, so it'll filter it'll filter out like all the other bad stuff. But we use it for our fish tank because we have a saltwater reef tank. So you need to be very precise on what's going into your right. into your tank. So how do you add salt to salt? I mean, is it just like iodine iodized salt, or is it special sea salt you no, have to add spe- to it? No, it's usually synthetic salt. But um, so I use uh, who am I using now? I'm using uh, Red Sea uh, Coral Pro salt. Huh. Um, so it's specifically formulated for to mimic seawater. Plus, but, but, it actually but, has a bit higher content of calcium, magnesium, and strontium for coral growth. Ah, uh, but with your tea, you're drinking straight RO water. Uh, actually, for tea, I am using just refrigerated, filtered water. But I also have a well, so I'm running. I have okay. well water, though it is pretty high in minerals. Um, but nothing bad, so I just run it through. Right. A, so the refrigerator just has a carbon block in there, pretty much, and just will strip any right. kind of like chemical yeah. easy stuff. But uh, for the most part, yeah. it is pretty hard. I always ha- I have to descale my uh, my kettle all the time. Um, right. But right. it tastes good, so that's why I use it. Right. Right. Like I found out that like really, I live in Phoenix. We have really terrible water because we get it from the Colorado River, it's and then treated. they have to like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's there's so much chlorine it, it literally tastes like pool water. Yeah. And um so the the I just have to replace the carbon filters because you know, they do a pretty good job removing all the chlorine, which is really the only reason the 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 flavor that I hate is just the chlorine flavor. So Yeah, like if I if I if I was on city water like when I lived in Columbus, we had a RO drinking uh unit, so that's what mm-hmm. we used when we lived there, but uh, I'm on well water. Um, here and it's good. I miss, so, I miss I miss well water. Tell you what, <laughs> it's actually pretty nice when you compare to here. I think. Oh yeah, like I've had well water. I grew up with well water up until my twenties, and that was like the first time I ever ran into like city water. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like it's, oh, this is horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always whatever you grew up with is generally is for the most part what you like. Um, I don't think anybody so, likes chlorinated water, though. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Do we have any more? I wasn't. I'm not keeping. I'm not paying attention. Oh, we only have two people watching, so that's probably why we don't have a lot of questions. Uh, I got four on my side. Dang, you're. See, so you're more popular than me. Yeah. Uh, so so yeah, I guess I should ask that. Does anybody have any questions on my stream? Um, my friends in there. One of. One of the guys I know personally, he said, sounds like my kids. They hate the kennel. <laughs> uh, so do you still roll your own cigars? Uh, I don't. And uh, people, they want me to do it. They want, you know, I've got all the stuff. I just don't have the time. And um, so I was just thinking about it. I'm like, okay, by the time I set everything up and then I get it, I get the, the tobacco just right. And then I'm going to mess up a few cigars just because I do it like once a year. Um, oh, are, are you talking? I, I saw your lips, but I can't hear nope, you. Nope, I wasn't talking. Oh, <laughs> and so, yeah. So what I figured out is like, okay, if I spend a day rolling cigars to make 20 of them or 30 of them, you know, you start to do this thing where you're like, okay, is it worth my time? Are they as good as cigars I can buy? Um, I, I love doing it just because I like learning and, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm a curious guy. But um, I'm like, oh, man, I could just buy like a $5 cigar and it tastes just as good as mine. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's super fun and I really appreciate doing like learning the craft. But as far as like, you know, I could just buy a $5 cigar and you know it's just as good so yeah so you you really have to roll a lot and get good at it and roll and batch roll and you know really like spend a whole weekend and you know because it it makes a mess and then 
Um, I don't have a perfect system down yet, so I'm, I'm learning a lot. And so, you know, if you want to really do it, I tell people just spend like a weekend and just roll as much as you can. And half of them are going to be duds um, the first few times you do it. So uh, what do you have for a mold? Um, I've got three different molds. I've got, um, oh, I should probably just show you. Um, I think I, yeah, let me show you. Here, let me switch your view so they can just see you. Okay, hold on. I'll be right back. All right. <laughs> so while James is doing that, I'll talk, and he has no idea what I'm saying. So that could become interesting. But uh, I like to roll my own cigars, and I, I, I definitely need to do some videos. Um, for those wondering who are watching on James' stream, uh, you can find my channel, TN Tobacco. It's T. Oh, and right. tobacco so okay you can go check him out and you can go check out james uh james's channel for those watching on my channel he's james Patton. if you just uh youtube uh james Patton, you'll find his channel so his channel is james Patton, and uh mine is t n the letter n tobacco so if you want to go find that out and for whoever was asking earlier about getting into pipe smoking i also have a how to smoke a pipe uh, video it's actually one of the most popular on my channel so you can check that out and I go through the steps of uh, smoking your first pipe so you can go check those out and now James is back so <laughs> finish my <I'm> plugs <laughs> no you're good um, I've okay this is called so if you're into let me see um, okay we're split screen still okay if you're into uh, let me let me just do mine so they can see more Okay, so if you're into like antiquing and stuff, you might find this at antique shops. Yeah, it's a, it's called a Carl Hart. Uh, it's got the number and the it's got the place. The sh it's, it's a German name, Schweizenjigsen. I can't even say it right. But this is an old find I found, old style. This is probably from the 50s, I would guess. I don't know. It's hard to tell. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of the makers now have switched over to plastic. Yeah, and all the glue is coming off on this, and it's really beat up. But <laughs> overall, it's in good shape for being old, hand-carved wood. So these make little perfectos, and um, and I I, I didn't because it's because this is a real antique. You can see there's cracks in it where people were were using it, um, and uh, I just brushed it out very lightly because it had a really cool. You can still see like the old patina look to the wood. Yep. So this is actually, for the most part, it's display, but I love this size, and they're really small and easy to you, easy to uh, roll because you can just, you know, it's the size of your hand. So, so you, what's you, the you, what's the length and ring gauge on that? I have no idea. It's a okay. weird, like <laughs> it's a weird, like European size. That, that it's not a typical size. Um, I would say it's probably thirty gauge by four inches, five inches. Thirty? That's super tiny. Yeah, I, it's. It's less than a half inch. <laughs> it's about a half inch. Yeah. Huh. About a half inch. I don't know. Well, here's my finger. I don't know what, how big you think a finger is. Oh yeah. I guess it is pretty small. Yeah. That's, I probably put that at about a 42 maybe. Yeah. Maybe 40. Uh, it depends how you roll too. Right. So this is what I like too, because I like the small cigars that I can just kind of, I can put, I can load this whole thing up and I, and I have a few C clamps Yep. And um, I think they're just really unique shapes, you know. But here's here's my main one. This is a main, like a the one that you get from Leaf Only. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, it's probably, I think this is a 48 gauge, I think. Yeah. Uh, and so you can roll any length of Parejo. Parejo just means straight cigar. Um, so normally I, I actually make them kind of shorter because just because I'm a newbie and it, it's easier to make a shorter cigar um, to, for it to be uniformly, you know. So I, I normally I, I make robustos out of this kind of a thing, you know. Yeah, I don't so. I don't like that mold because it doesn't have it, it. You get so much pinched in the seam. Yeah, yeah. There's no there, right. There's no relief. Right. Um, so this, for instance, you can see you don't. You, it's impossible to get a pinch, because when you're in here, and then this hugs around it. Right. So I don't get any pinches with this. So um, that's another thing. Like even if I if I roll a really bad, that's why I roll smaller too with a lot of these because you're less likely to get pinches. 
But um, when you put a cigar in there and it pinches the sides, you have to roll it on the flat, roll it and press it, roll it and press it, and that's just a lot of extra pressing, you know, so. Yeah. So I have, I actually have some professional molds I picked up. Um, grab them here. So Leaf Only sells these now, but I picked them up before Leaf Only started carrying them, and I have the, uh, the plastic molds. That's switch, what I need to get. Switch over. So I have the plastic molds. Uh, this is a 48 by 7. So it's uh, you can make you know whatever length you want, but it's a 48 ring gauge. And then you have the nice, it's machined. Right. Let's see if I can get it in the light here. So it's machined. That's the way to do it. Um, you know, CNC machined. So a lot of uh, big companies are going over to these now. So you have the uh, the the channels here. And then it's machined, so I mean it has a perfectly nice seal, um, and you really don't get any pinches or anything. Um, you do have to do a quarter turn on of them just to uh, take right. out what little seam there is. But I mean, these right. are it's a it's a game changer going from that mold that you were showing to to a nice professional mold. I mean, you can get these at Leaf Only for about eighty bucks right now. That's not bad. No, they're great, um, and uh, they are totally worth it. Especially if you're going to start, if you're going to roll more, um, they have different sizes too. Oh, that's a 48. I like that because I like to um, use the Cameroon wrapper, and Cameroon wrappers tend to be short, um, uh -huh. so you can only you can only get so much of a cigar out of them. And um, uh, but they also have like you know from 52, 56. I think they sometimes carry the 60s. Um, so you can make some, you know, nubs or whatever, but, uh, yeah, nubs. totally, totally worth getting a pro uh, professional mold. If you are going to do, mm -hmm. if you're going to do it more often, I mean, you can, you can sometimes snag them off of eBay as well. Um, even the wooden ones, there are now some, some makers who haven't switched to plastic have still huh. switched to wood molds that have been, uh, CNC machined. Right. So just like the plastic ones are, but they're they're just made out of wood, but they're CNC, so they are nice tight tolerances and fit together perfectly. You'll sometimes huh. see those. I'm gonna adjust my lights here. Hold on. Okay. But yeah, like it's I've like I've seen um, so I've seen um, on eBay somebody trying to sell a uh, mold from one of the big companies and claiming it was like from the early 1900s I'm looking at I'm like that's been CNC machined it's <laughs> max 15 years old if that <laughs> <laughs> so it is not antique and it is not worth the $300 that you're trying to get for it yeah and I've, I've, I've even messaged those sellers I'm like that mold is no more than 15 years old <laughs> it is CNC machined it is not from 1910 well or something well, maybe this is not that old. I looked up the company and I couldn't find much information on it. Yeah, I mean, those ones, I mean, that one probably is old -ish. 60s, maybe? Yeah, probably. It's got really old glue that looks like pink. <laughs> um, but it was only like 40, 50 bucks, so I figured, worst case scenario, I'll just hang it on the wall. All right, yeah. But... Uh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, so if you're not doing too many uh, cigars, um, man, you should you should let me know what videos people wanted for, out of you, and I'll make them. <laughs> you should. Um, people always ask me how do you flavor your own pipe tobacco. They ask me how do you roll cigars. They want more. They want updated versions. Um, they want, and it's hard because I'm learning how to do cigar rolling, but then I also have to demonstrate that and show right. it. Yep. So people are like, oh, you're an expert. I'm like, no, I just, I'm trying to encourage you to do it because if I can do it, you can do it. You right. Know? Yep. So, yeah, um, I'm the same. I, I wouldn't call myself an expert, but, you know. Yeah. They, Let's see what you rolled. My, uh, my new air is friggin' packed. So I just have a few more left in my, in my display unit over here. But for the most part. So let me 
Get a nice shot here. Let me uh, focus in here. Yeah, let me see that. That looks... You rolled that? Come on. Oh, you have to f auto focus. There we go. Let me turn that off. So yeah, this is my my cigar. Dude, that's pretty darn good. Yeah. So most of them get the job done. Um, but yeah, so this is my personal blend. I call it the Innkeeper uh, because it uh, pretty much tastes like a uh, <laughs> a bed and breakfast breakfast. Pretty much tastes like. <laughs> coffee with um some sugar some cream uh a bit of dry toast um and it right. actually has a slight salty bacon note in there too so that's why i call it the innkeeper uh what, what can you share the blend or is it the secret uh i can tell you all the countries so well it is a cameroon wrapper that's a uh, pretty straightforward with a uh connecticut broadleaf binder and then filler, I use uh, Colombian, Brazilian, uh, Honduran, and uh, Dominican filler. So it's a six-country blend. What? Dude, so you bought all that on Leaf Only? or? Yeah, I got that all on Leaf Only. Dang. I so, wonder how you get the bacon flavor. That's what I'm curious about. Uh, I'll have to check my tasting notes on what Leaf give, gives that. But... Um, I would assume like I think it might be strange. I think it might be the Honduran that has the slight salty note to it. Huh. Um, but yeah, so I I mean I bought a sample size of almost everything they had. I rolled uh you know, puros of every single leaf I had. I, I try to find the highest quality, even the filler, you know, it's like I'm trying to find the, the best leaf to use for like a binder and a wrapper. Um, yeah, <laughs> which is hard for when you're dealing with like some of the Seiko and uh, the little Harrow is usually fine because it's usually a nice thick piece, but the Seiko tends to be a bit thin, um, so it's hard to find a nice piece. But anyways, I rolled you know puros of every single leaf I had, and then smoked those all, made tasting notes of every single one. Um, so I have tasting notes of every single leaf that I've had from them. Um, what, dude? That's intense. Yeah, so then I, then I came up with this blend uh, based off all those tasting notes to put those together. So it worked out. It's, lo it's low nicotine but high on flavor. And um, yeah. A few of their stuff I've tried was the opposite. It was just so high in nicotine and it had hardly any flavor. So I was just kind of like, I, it's it was really thick, really, really thick leaf. But it was, it, it, it almost had dirt on it still. It was very unpolished. Um, and it just had so much nicotine. It had. It was just you couldn't really enjoy it. Um, was it a lot of Lajero? So, um, no, this was some wrapper leaf. It was like some. Uh, it was sort of like a Maduro, thick, like almost broad leaf, but th almost kind of raggedy looking. Was it the Connecticut um, broad leaf, the Connecticut Maduro? Yeah, but it wasn't like a good Connecticut broad leaf. It was like some rustic version of that. Yeah, those they are had, hard. Those are hard to deal with because they have the kind of the thick veins. Super thick veins. So that's why I use the broadleaf as a binder. Yeah. But I love broadleaf for flavor because it's kind of creamy, kind of mm -hmm. smooth. And I like how big it is so I can make multiple cigars. Yep. Um, but this particular one, I forgot what it was called, but it was it was pretty – I'm going to show people the website real quick. So, yeah. I mean, like I said, you really have to kind of taste each each leaf – and determine right. what each quality has, and then go from there. Um, do you do you do you have a, a tobacco shredder for your pipe tobacco? Uh, I just use I have a um, a pasta roller, so I just use the spaghetti <laughs> the oh, spaghetti nice. cutter on the pasta roller. <laughs> My wife's not happy about that. <laughs> I'm showing people right now the website, and there's like little quick video snippets yeah. of people using their tobacco and. It's exactly how I did it. Just rolled along. I, I rolled parallel with the, the, the veins to the cigar. And yeah. So yeah, I mean, I'm definitely now that I've moved my office around, uh, I'm definitely gonna be making some videos, uh, yeah, yeah. in that line. So, if you make high quality cigar rolling videos, um, there's not a lot of people doing it. I mean, you're you're just gonna dominate, man. Most of my stuff was Hopefully. on an iPhone four like years ago. Yeah. So I mean that's kind of my plan. I also I need to put in a I need to put in an order to leaf only because I am low on supplies for 
especially my personal blend, um, but I'm just low on supplies in general. Um, and I need to pick up some La Tequila and whatnot for some pipe tobacco. I have, uh, so I'm gonna, I have a local metal shop who's gonna make me a press um, mm -hmm. so I can press some, you know, a plug so I can make flake tobacco and whatnot. Um, but I mean, one of the things that I wanted is for it to be stainless steel. Uh, so, uh. I, but he didn't have one getting stainless steel square tube stock is expensive. Um, yeah. so basically I just kind of have a standing order in with him that if he ever has a job that needs that, he'll, he'll make sure to order an extra piece or order enough so he can make my piece for me. Because if you, if you have to buy it in like one foot increments, just like a one foot increment is still like $130 or something for a thick piece of, you know, four inch square tube stock. Um, mm -hmm. so, and he checked around at some other shops too, to see if they had a piece laying around, but they didn't. So, um, at some point, if, uh, if it goes too long, then I, I might just have to bite the bullet and have him make it, but I really want him to make it out of stainless steel so I can press the plug and then I can put the whole shebang in the oven so I can hot press, oh. you know? Because if it's like wood, then you're just going to dry the crap out of the wood and it's going to crack. So, oh, yeah, yeah. So if it's stainless steel, I can put it in the oven at 170 degrees and let it sit there for six hours, you know, whatever, and hot press, you know, my, my own flakes and all that fun stuff. So That's brilliant, man. So that, that's also on tap for, you know, videos coming down the line for me eventually. But, yeah, I definitely need to make more, um, more cigars and then make videos about those. I just didn't really have a good set up in my office until recently. So I'll be able to start doing that. But like I said, need some supplies from, from leaf only. Yeah. Right now I'm showing people, I had this, uh, Pennsylvania wrapper when I click on it, it's, there's nothing there, but it was a really hard, it was pretty harsh. The Pennsylvania, Pencil uh, I, I haven't had the Pennsylvania wrapper, but I have had their Pennsylvania. I've had their Seiko uh -huh. filler leaf. It's actually really good. It's actually pretty sweet, if I remember correctly. Um, huh. So that's something. Uh, I don't know. Did you have their dark fired wrapper? No, it it, it kind of had. It, I think this was it. But chocolatey tobacco, I, definitely that was it. Yeah. But it was it was just so it was like it was. I don't know if it was like under cured. Not, are you right? Under cured or under processed? But it was kind of. A little too rough yeah and that's one thing too i mean the these i've i've rolled enough that i i have pretty well aged cigars i mean this one is dated november of 2016 mm -hmm. <laughs> so this cigar has been aging in my humidor for you know coming right. up you know two and a half years over two and a half years now um so i ro i just kind of roll a bunch of them at one time um but uh, yeah, you definitely kind of need the space. So what I do is I have two of those molds of the the seven by forty eight. So I'll load those up, you know, the both of them. I'll mm -hmm. press. I'll come back an hour later to give them the quarter turn, and then I'll leave them pressed overnight while my wrapper leaf is you know yeah, moisturizing or whatever, and then I'll wrap them the next day. Um, so I you know I can bang through twenty of them in you know two days or whatever. Right. Um, uh, so people are asking, where do you start rolling your own? You go to try leaf only. There's a lot. To, there's a lot of. They even have like, uh, um, it's like a kit that you get, and it's just like everything's in the kit. You can try rolling like twenty with it. Yeah, just uh, know that they're not going to be that great because the kit press is crap. Yeah, it's just two pieces of wood. Yeah, it's just two pieces of wood. So you're gonna get these huge seams, but you'll at least get in the ballpark. Um, yeah. If you, uh, you could just roll by hand. You don't even really need to press, but yeah, you, you yeah, you can do that too. I've never if had any good, good. I haven't had any good luck with that though. <laughs> yeah. Like I have so much scrap. I'd love to be able to just roll some small cigarillos, but, uh, they always come out horrible. <laughs> yeah. Well with mine, um, with my scraps, oh, I don't have it with me. Um, I've got this thing. It's a tool called a perfect draw and yep. it's like a little cutting tool. So I'll load up like a cigar, and even if I over, 
overfill it or whatever with the scraps, I just draw like a few holes with the perfect draw and it turns out okay. Yeah, I might I might think about doing something like that. I'd love to have like a press, like a 32 gauge press, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, we'll see. Um, but yeah, as far as uh, where to begin with your cigars, yeah, definitely Leaf Only is the place that has all the stuff. Um, if you really want to get into it, uh, I would get a higher quality, um, a higher quality mold uh, if you're interested. After like using one of the kits, um, so at least you're kind of like in the ballpark. Um, and they have uh, t- pipe tobacco blends and. Uh, you know, just all kinds of stuff for pipe tobacco too. Right. Yeah. So. You but whatever. Wh- whenever it says gaba or a gaba gaba leaf or fronto leaf, those are like really harsh leaves. I've noticed that are for like smoking weed, like rolling, like <laughs> rolling and blunts and stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So those are uh, graba or graba leaves and fronto leaves. They're usually uh, lower quality too. They're lower quality and they're really just designed for wrapping up weed. It sounds like. Pretty much. I'd st- I'd stay away from those. Well, let me blow up. Oh, oh, blow up my yeah, ear. Yeah, or here. I mean, they're kind of like, it's sort of like, uh, it's like a broadleaf almost. Yeah. But I mean, it's not to say they're bad. I just don't think you're gonna get great flavor if you're just using these. Right. Um. So Siggy hand roll video is that silly? Uh, no, I mean I'll, I'll wait. Siggy. Siggy hand roll as in cigarette hand roll or cigar? <laughs> I'm not. You went a little short on the uh, hand there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll definitely work on um, uh, getting some how to roll cigar videos out there. Um, and uh, yeah. I'll try to do what I can. Uh, if people are interested, they can, they can bug the crap out of me. Um, yeah, from my <laughs> from my YouTube channel. If you go in the about, you'll get my email address, and you can bug the crap out of me if you want. Um, but yeah, I'll 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 do what I can so I can kind of get those moving towards the uh, front of my list of to do videos, um, and then hopefully I can help you out from there. But really, yeah, Leaf Only is probably the place to go. Uh, I actually have a promo code there if you want five percent off for if you just use the promo code TNT. Uh, oh, you, nice! You'll get five percent off there. Um, I ordered. I order enough that I order on the wholesale site. <laughs> oh, you do? No way! If you order ten pounds, if you're gonna order ten pounds or more, you can get the wholesale pricing. Um, but yeah. So if you wait do, a minute, so you order so much that you order whole like by ten pounds at a time? What? Do you, yeah. Holy cow! Well, I'll buy like, I'll buy you know. Two pounds of the Dominican filler, you know, a pound of the uh, Honduran, and then two pounds of the other one. So right there, I mean, that's seven pounds. I'll buy four pounds of binder leaf, and I'll buy, you know, two pounds of wrapper leaf. So so you're rolling um, 50 cigars, 60, 70 cigars. Yeah. Which is, it, it, it is cheaper. Uh, it works out to, even after all the scrap, it works out to about 80, I calculated about 80 cents a cigar. Right. I, I was doing, I cut, when I was doing it, I had maybe less experience. So mine is about a dollar a, st- a cigar, yeah. depending on what you what you buy. Right. And if, I mean, if you got decent, decent, decent tastes and you can go through all those samples and, you know, make your tasting notes and then blend from there. I mean, you can tailor it to exactly what you like, which is one of the best things I, you know, about this cigar. I mean, I'd put this up against any, you know, name brand. It doesn't look great, but flavor-wise, right. I'd put this up right. against any name brand cigar. But the draw and burn might not be as great, but you you figure it out, right? Right. Uh, and for the most part, uh, they're, they've been fine. But, I mean, flavor-wise, I would definitely put these up against any of the high-end guys. Because it's specifically what I like, so for me. Yeah, the reason the reason why I started rolling is because there was this huge cigar apocalypse, you know, with all the talk of the FDA and everything, and I just thought, okay, well, I'm just going to start rolling my own because I guess whole leaf tobacco is sold as a textile because I guess as an agricultural product. Yeah, because I guess they use it as a natural pesticide. 
Um, so it's taxed differently, and it's not really seen it's, as it's not taxed. So that's the oh, it's yeah, right, right, right. It's not taxed, and it's not seen as what it is is tobacco essentially for, by the government anyway. Right, and actually, I think that it's that way in the Canadians as well. Um, right. Yeah. So my my friend uh, that has tried my cigar says he uh, puts my cigar in his top five. <laughs> oh. Well, maybe I should. Maybe I'll trade you one or two. Yeah. The, so yeah, I mean, they they come out exactly well, how I want them. So maybe maybe what I'll do is I'll give you my. Wait, do you like coffee? I had a cup today, but it was my first cup in like a month. I don't. Oh, so never I don't, mind. I don't really drink coffee. <laughs> I was gonna say I'll just send you like a pound or two of like my roasted coffee, and you can send me one of your cigars. I mean, my wife might drink it. Yeah. What? Well, but yeah. But if you if you won't, what's the point? <laughs> my, yeah. My wife will probably. What What is the deal with coffee? Do you? Is it just because you don't like it, or is it just you haven't found a good one yet? Or uh, I mean, I like coffee. I just I just don't drink much of it. Uh, usually, the super high caffeine will get to me. Yeah. Um, me too. I'm pretty sensitive actually to caffeine. Yeah. So I, I tend to. I mean. Considering how much tea I drink, I can drink a lot more tea with less caffeine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, if I was sipping coffee all day, I'd be totally screwed. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. Here's what I've noticed. Caffeine in coffee, it has a, uh, a spike and then it, and it drops. And um, with tea, it's a slow burn. And it, for me, like I kind of, I kind of grew up with ADHD. And so tea for me is perfect. You, I can drink a lot of black teas, and it's just a slow burn of caffeine. Um, yeah, because, I mean, so this five grams of tea that I've used, I had a, you know, 32 ounces of tea in my, in my pot here. Mm -hmm. And caffeine-wise, it's the equivalent of one cup of coffee. <laughs> right. You know, for a 32-ounce yeah. pot is equivalent to one cup of coffee. Right. A small cup of coffee, not a, <laughs> not a big cup of coffee. Right, right. So it's it's very different, you know. You're not shocking your system. Right. Um, let's see here. Do I have any questions? I think. Oh, there's. We only have one person watching. I'll see, put, we're not cool enough. I'll put yours in mine. <laughs> okay. Let me see. Show. Okay. Let me click it. Let me click it. What? Oh, that's just that's just my channel. Yeah. Oh, 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 for to share, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So if people want to bug me, they can, uh, they can, they can come see my channel. That's a good-looking thumbnail. <laughs> I thought it was a funny plug. thumbnail. Well, I didn't know what other picture to get um, of you, so I was like, okay, I guess this will work. <laughs> It's kind of one of those weird pictures where you're like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I guess I was just thinking it's the best I could do. <laughs> I try to that? make, I try to make the color look the same, but then it, you look kind of green. I look kind of green. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, and then we kind of strayed off of it um, for, for tea. Uh, some other sources um, for good quality tea, you can check out, check out the uh, dragonteahouse.biz. Um, they're a western-facing Chinese company. Uh, they have pretty good stuff. That's where I actually got this Da Hong Pao. Um, it's not that expensive. They have, and they have a pretty good selection of pours as well. Um, there's also the King Tea Mall. Uh, it's pretty good. And then all those boutique suppliers that I talked to uh, earlier, White 2T, with the, it's the number two, White 2T, uh, mm -hmm. Crimson Lotus, and um, yeah, you can, you can go check those guys out too. It's called, uh, the first one's DragonTeaHouse.biz? Dragon, yes, DragonTeaHouse.biz. Okay, I'm showing people right now. Yeah, they're, they're pretty good. Um, with, with them, Unan Sourcing and um, the King T-Mall, they are all based out of China, so shipping can take a while. Um, oh, yeah. So just be aware Wait. of that. Um, you usually can pay extra for uh, expedited shipping. Um, on Unan Sourcing, I'd say definitely do that because it's usually only a few more bucks. Um, Dragon Tea House, shipping's included with the price of the tea, so the shipping's technically free, I guess. 
um, or you can pay for expedited shipping. Um, and I believe you can do the same on, on uh, King T Mall as well. Um, so just know if you're going to ship uh, the cheapest way, it could take, it, to the U.S., it could take four to eight weeks. Um, though I've never actually had it take that long. I actually just got a, a shipment shipped ground uh, two weeks ago, and it took 10 days. So, um Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, if you but if you go expedited shipping, you might get like seven days. But again, it, you could be four to six, four to six, four to eight weeks, uh, depending. Um, also, oh, actually, White Two T does ship out of out of China as well, so um, it could take a while. Just just know that for ordering that, it will take some time to get there. But I've never had I've never had a package get lost uh, or uh, substantially damaged. You might have a little a little box dings here and there but really hasn't been a problem uh for whatever reason they're selling mushrooms what's up with that they're probably medicinal mushrooms of some sort yeah although dried like... dried mushrooms are pretty big in uh chinese cuisine so it's probably just something that they happen to, to carry i think my wife's home now they have a few they have a few other like uh herbs and stuff that they have as well they don't carry just tea if you're talking about the dragon tea house yeah i was surprised it's some sort of fungus that you eat i guess i don't really yeah. know i mean dry dried mushrooms are pretty are used in like soups and all that kind of stuff too and in, in china mm-hmm. so because obviously they store forever if uh, you dry them they have this thing called supreme organic ancient tree golden noodles dian dian hung yep. young you uh, that looks pretty. I've never seen tea like this. It's is that like yellow. An, is that the brick? No, this is just loose. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I have I have that and I have some of that in the brick in a brick form. But yeah. It's like yellow. Yeah, it's a it's a black tea, right? Uh, I, I yeah, but it doesn't look black. Yeah, black tea. Well, the higher end stuff is more of a light brown to yellow ish. Huh. You won't find a whole lot that's super super black. Um, yeah, it looks which like is why, which is another reason it's actually called red tea in, in China. <laughs> oh, okay. It looks kind of like spider legs, if I'm being honest. Yeah, no, that's really it's really good stuff. Um, huh. a, a lot of the higher end black teas, you'll get, uh, you'll find a lot that have really nice chocolate notes, um, mm-hmm. dark chocolate notes. So, definitely something to check out. So they sell at Dragon Tea House. They sell white, yellow tea, oolong, pu'er, floral. So what's yellow tea then? Yellow t- uh, under their definition, I'm not sure. It might be oh, crap. I don't even remember the name of it. Uh, it's a type of tea that grow that they actually seed with. Um, <laughs> they actually seed with uh, flour, like wheat flour. Mm-hmm. Um, and it grows th- th- this type of mold grows in it, <laughs> which is a oh. yellow, which is kind of like a yellow mold, and uh, transforms uh, transforms it. Uh, this guy named Doozer Town says, "Where in the world are you two? I'm assuming he's not a subscriber. This is on your channel. Um, well, <laughs> Doozer knows where I live. I'm in New Hampshire. James is in Phoenix. Um, yeah." What's the local tea? Th- oh man, local tea for me, nothing. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm two hours away from anything good, tobacco wise. I have a small. There's a there's a small lounge here. Um, there's a there's a cigar bar here. That's actually decent. The selection's okay. Um, nothing for pipe tobacco though. I'd have to drive two hours to get any good pipe tobacco, and absolutely zero music here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would say um, Phoenix, we have, if you're going to get tea, there's a few um, high-end coffee shops that have pretty good tea. Well, relatively good tea, Um, but uh, nothing real fancy as far as tea. Tobacco, yeah, we have everything you could want. Arizona is really cigar tobacco friendly, so we have a lot of local companies here, uh, TNT, is here um, Cigars Daily and now Zeal Team 6 and Cigar Warehouse and there's a lot of shops so we have 
arguably the best state for cigars. Um, and if you, there's a lot of local native tribes here. And uh, so technically, if you're on a reservation, you're not really on federal land. So they can tax the tobacco the way they want. So often that means it's cheaper. So if you're really lucky, you can go to uh, a reservation and maybe even get a better discount just because it's not taxed the same. So, nice. but, then, <laughs> but yeah, but you have to drive. You kind of have to know where to go. And there, some reservations are really nice. Um, and so I can only think of one called Owl Ear, which is a little cheaper just because they don't have taxes the same. Uh, music, we have a lot of music. I mean, it's just, you know, music's music. I don't know. We got a lot of stuff. <laughs> yep. Let's see here. I feel like, did I? I wonder how many people you ha uh, are watching. I got to go back to mine, see if anyone's has it has a question is my mic too loud no you're good okay uh i got two people left <laughs> i got one person i feel so bad i'm like wow this is... okay it is getting it's... late on the east coast i mean it is 10 30 yeah. now and because the screen is squished i'm sure it's not pleasant to the eye <laughs> we'll have to fix that for next time yeah well yeah i think for the most part it's looked okay on my end so I can, yeah, I, don't I, I, can dro I can drop you my local file if you want to put put it out there. Sure. Um, I'm trying to figure out why did it go to that output. I don't know. <laughs> why, why can't I rescale right now? Probably because I'm streaming now. Probably. Yeah. But um, I, th I think that's it. Yeah. Oh, we got three people watching now. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, now we're famous again. You got to bump up. <laughs> I still got two on my side. <laughs> That's five people. All right. Yeah. If you guys are just tuning in, what we've been talking about teas, the best kind of tea, uh, pretty much everything. Pipe tobacco, cigars, roll on your own. Everybody's going to have to come uh, come rewatch the stream later. What's up? What were you going to ask? I was going to say, the, the three people watching, do you have any questions for us right now? Because Eric from Teen Tobacco, um, I'll put his link down below. He knows almost everything about tea, so if you have any questions, this is the time to ask him. Yep. It's been a good time. We should do this uh, more. The only problem is that we're on, <laughs> you're on Pacific time and I'm on Eastern, so we have like a three-hour gap. It's like, when do we find time to do this? Yeah. Well, it's 10.36 your time, right? Yep. Yep. Well, I'll be um, when daylight savings happens. When we, when you know, when we fall back, I'll be mountain time. Right. I think so at I think some point um, we might. Uh, New England might switch to uh, Atlantic time and stay there and not recognize daylight savings, but we'll see. I'm hoping that yep. happens. <laughs> so then we'll all we, we, then we'll always be three hours apart. <laughs> Uh, let's see, what else we talk about? I feel like that's... I'm trying to think. We've been on for two hours or so. Yeah. <laughs> we, were, no, we, dude. we were on for four hours together by ourselves, but it was mostly, uh, mostly YouTube bitching. <laughs> yeah, if you guys don't know, it's hard being a YouTuber. So, um, uh, for instance, we were talking about the weird rules and how the algorithm is not fair or accurate. Um, so... Um, it was kind of cool having what's his name spend uh i think what was his name viewer activity mark whitaker he like twenty dollars like even if it's not like i mean like little things like that really add up so definitely uh so yeah like that's just for if, if, if anything else that's emotional support because you have a lot of issues with tobacco alcohol and youtube so <laughs> yeah it's been fun they've definitely uh Trying to throw some roadblocks in, uh, in yeah. a way. Like I was doing, I was telling um, Eric the other day, like I was doing cigar stuff for like eight years and um, I don't think I ever made a dime doing it. And so it's not that I don't love it. It's just um, the mattresses and coffee, like it's easier to get that monetized. Um, 
and then enjoy cigars as a hobby and keep it as a hobby. So it's just so tricky kind of following the rules. Unless you have like a cigar company like Cigars Daily, it's hard to really spend that much time doing cigars. You know, it's it's just hard, you know. Right, because like him and Zeal and previously TNT were using their YouTube channel as more of a advertisement to get, you know, new customers to their companies. Right. So, so they're not... They're making money, right? Either way, they're right. Exactly, they're making money pr- they have promoting their business. Right, they have a product they're selling. We're not selling a product. We're just guys hanging out, enjoying cigars and pipes. So right, our um, uh, the uh, the content is our product. Right, right. So that's why like Patreon is important for us, um, because we're not going to make money on advertisements and, um, you know, so Patreon's a big deal if if you really value these you know content you know this is this is how you get it through patreon so yeah it keeps I'm, people like us alive yeah i haven't started one yet like my original plan was gonna wait until i got to ten thousand before i dealt with crowdfunding and then of course uh then recently i had a few things uh demonetized those were my heaviest hitters and my yeah and my biggest uh my biggest draw of new okay. subscribers too so uh that was kind of a bummer Especially, and one thing a lot of people don't know is that if a video gets demonetized, YouTube st- stops suggesting it as well. So, yeah. like, one of my videos was suggested, you know, ten to fifteen thousand times a day, and now it's only suggested nine hundred times a day. <laughs> yeah, or um, because YouTube wants to make money, so right. the the videos that are like happy and generic and quote unquote family friendly um they'll promote those more um and then the videos that i spend a lot of time and money on personally no one no one ever sees because they're not they're not promoting that (laughs) so it's just it's hard because then you're like well man i'm like being censored here and i the stuff i'm passionate about doesn't make money and it's not like i ultimately it's not like the end all be all it's just to sustain that it's hard to sustain that you know yeah especially like um you know stuff that we were doing you know i I buy tons of pipe tobacco that i normally wouldn't right um, because i want to review it for people and people want to know uh same with cigars as cigars that i buy that i normally wouldn't um and tea that i normally wouldn't um so i yeah. was to the point where my channel was sustaining itself i was bringing in enough cash to at least offset all those costs and now it's kind of going right. back the other way so it's a little i'm a little bummed about that but you know it, it is what it is so i guess it's right. uh kind of plow forward see if anything happens um if you can make any improvements and all that fun stuff and obviously as crowdfunding becomes a little more popular um uh, it is pretty popular now and Hopefully that will help kind of drive a new a new level. But again, the problem if you get demonetized on YouTube, they stop suggesting your videos, which makes it harder to find the audience who's actually looking for you. Um, so that kind of sucks. And the the last problem is they're not consistent about it. So I mean, no. the video that was huge and got demonetized, I can search for the same thing, and there are videos with the same exact topic that are monetized right now. So it's like, well, why did I get demonetized and these people are still monetized? And it's like, after three years, why did you demonetize me and all that fun stuff? Well, what suddenly happened that my content after, you know, 300,000 views suddenly became bad content or whatever. So, well, it's really weird. Um, like I review, uh, I have a second channel called Jimmy reviews and I review CBD products and um you know gummies and tinctures and i'm i'm just it's just a fun thing and i had one my first video my my very first video i'm trying vaping and it was on for like 8 months oh well, at first i put it on my main channel and then someone said make a separate channel because they're going to flag you so i created a separate channel which is why i created it and it was doing really well it was getting a thousand views a day which is for me that's like that's a lot you know uh, and, it, and it was growing and it was like 30, 40, 50,000, you know, views. And then um, out of nowhere, just like six, seven months later, they was flagged for 
inappropriate content and all you can do is click a button to protest it or whatever. Like there's really no, it doesn't say why. Yeah. Um, they I'm just said gonna, you violated the community guidelines. It's like, okay, which guideline? It's like, they're, right. not, they're not even like, they can't right. even tell you that much. It's like, oh, come on. Right. So like vaping apparently is a, well, that one video is considered age inappropriate, but I'm like, I'm just vaping. I'm not doing anything illegal. I don't know. So I, my theory is that maybe a, a, a competitor flagged the vaping. Um, I, I don't know. Flagged it as an agent. Right. Did somebody it? flag it or something like that because they're being dicks or who knows? Yeah. So, I mean, that was like, wow, like this vaping thing, people like vaping. And I'm just starting and I'm trying it out. And I wanted to show people how you could, because, you know, for sleeping and things like that, CBD is great for inflammation. And so. And the dumbest uh, thing, the dumbest thing ever. Is that yeah. one, even if it's age restricted, the highest coveted marketing audience is 18 to 45, right. which is exactly wh wh what my channel is targeted to is 18 to 45. So yeah. I am targeting the highest level, you know, the highest coveted demographic for advertising. So why? why does it matter if it's quote unquote age restricted? Why can't you advertise on it? Cause that's exactly the people you want to be advertising to. Right. And, and it was doing, my video was doing really well. Like, um, you know, uh, you put like an affiliate link in there and, um, you know, it was doing well. And as soon as it started doing well, then it got demonetized and right. people are doing like heroin and, 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 and you know, like real heavy drugs on YouTube and here I am vaping CBD. Right. <laughs> and I'm like considered like a felon or something. It right. Exactly. Sense. And then it's like, well, and then you look at all these companies all who are, who are advertising on YouTube and then right. you go watch, you know, a network TV show that they're also advertising on. It's like my content right. isn't nearly as risque as, right. you know, whatever, you know, you know, Law and Order SVU. I'm not talking about <laughs> those types of yeah. you know well, topics. It's like, like you'll see really like people. Yeah, you'll see people on like um, you know, it's like like Showtime or or uh, HBO, and you're like, okay, so uh, yeah, but they don't have commercials. That's a premium channel. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess you're paying for that. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, you, you, if you look at any of the other you know cable networks, if you look at you know, Comedy Central, obviously you got South Park. I mean, we're not nearly as risque as South Park. And then you have yeah, like, like, I'm not Family Guy on, net, on, you know, network television. And like, like I said, you have all the crime shows like SVU and whatnot. They're all dealing with, <laughs> you know, sex crimes. It's like, yeah. okay, I'm not even yeah. close to as risque as an SVU uh, um, yeah. episode. So, but, you know, why is that? Why am I, I advertising non-friendly, but SVU is just fine? You know? Like this right here, like there's plenty of channels based on alcohol. I take one sip, demonetized. Right, and, and there's beer commercials on you know every other commercial watching a football game. Yeah. And, <laughs> oh, if I take one. Oh, you, you oh demonetized. It's like it doesn't make any sense. There's no rhyme or reason. No. You know, the whiskey vault. The reason they have a great channel is because that's their industry. They actually, they're again, they're in the whiskey industry. Um, so even if they make money or don't, it, it's gonna It works for them. So. Right. Like I would love to be able to do, you know, I'd love to do cigar blending. I'd love to have my own like line of cigars or whatever. I just don't have the, one. I don't have the connections, but two, yeah. just to even like, just the licensing to right. manufacture cigars is insane. <laughs> yeah. I got a buddy. His name is Jordan. He lives in Florida. He's starting his own company and, Maybe I can connect you guys, but um, yeah, he does that right now. He's he's trying to start it out, and I'm like, well, good luck. It's it just seems like there's a lot against you, you know? Yeah, I mean, like I'd have to back against somebody else who who has the manufacturing license, right? Or again, who has the connections to be able to outsource this to outsource it to Nicaragua or Dominican Republic or something? Yeah, so you'd probably take a small cut of that, like maybe twenty percent, right? Um. And just let them do it all. Right. But I don't have those types of connections. But but they could just say, well, screw you. We have, you just told us your blend. 
Right. And we're going to we're going to do it without you. Yeah, exactly. It's like I mean, I'd love to have I'd love I mean, it'd be great if we could bring back US made cigars. I mean, but I mean, the there's only like one fa- one, you know, factory left down in Florida or I don't know the name of the town that had all, you know, at one point had hundreds of cigar factories that now it's what who's left? It's just um Oh crap! G- JC, mm-hmm. JC. Oh, I don't remember what it is. There's a bunch of like micro brands, but you're never gonna hear about them. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There are. Unless some small you go brands, to that shop. But... If you go, if you buy them at that shop, that's about it. Right. So, yeah. Unfortunately, I mean, there used to be a huge company here, uh, in New Hampshire, that uh, really? made cigars. Yeah. Actually, the sign is still on the building in Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, somebody's revived the brand, but it's not produced in New Hampshire. They're produced in Nicaragua now. Hmm. Hmm. It's like 403 or 803 or something like that. I'll have to, I'll have to check. I wish you were into coffee because I'd totally say I just got a bunch of this stuff. Um, this is called Corner One Coffee. They sent, I'm not even joking, they sent three boxes, each of their different blends. And uh, is one of them each... Sumatra? I'm a big fan of Sumatra. No, um, wow. I wish they would say what they are. It just says organic, fair trade. It doesn't tell you that. That's the only thing that I don't like about it is it doesn't really tell me where it's coming from. Um, but it's pretty good coffee. I just want to send it back to you to see what you think. Okay, go for it. <laughs> I won't stop you. <laughs> it's from it's from Canada. It, and when they say fair trade organic. Arabica coffee. That doesn't really mean a lot because Arabica is very common. It's a very common varietal. Um, it doesn't mean it's high quality necessarily. But I found this stuff's pretty good, and I'm I'm gonna do a giveaway soon. But I was like, man, I just want to give like a pound to everybody I know and see what they think. <laughs> I'm not a dark roast fan. I like the lighter roast. If you if you want to send me, yeah, well, I can send you, I can send you stuff for your way. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep, yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, do we have anybody else? Three people watching. Yeah, I got three on my side too. We we're, we're famous, man. We're famous, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Um, I think that's it. I mean, I don't know. Do, do you have anything else you want to talk about? No, not tonight. Cool. Well, I'm gonna go check on the salmon here and flip it around and keep smoking it and. Um, hopefully I don't get any diseases or anything because I guess I, I, I've been told that they have parasites in salmon and if yeah, you but don't I buy eat, it I, I eat raw salmon all the time for sushi yeah but I guess that's considered um, sashimi grade it's the highest grade Use it, usually they also freeze it to like negative 20 for a week too yeah so the stuff that you buy in a supermarket is it all frozen you think um I'm not sure if it's all states if, or if it's country, it but I think be. all all imported fish has to it's be from Alaska. Has to be frozen, so it might not. I don't know. I'm just kind of like worried because when you cure it, I'm like, did I cure it long enough? Did I smoke it long enough? I don't put know. Enough salt in it to kill everything. Yeah, I don't know. When you cure it, it's kind of weird because it sucked all the water out. And uh, I don't know if I did it long enough because it's still a little bit floppy. I mean, I always cook salmon pretty rare, so. Yeah. I'm excited, though, because I've never smoked my own. So you got a cold smoker? How do you make it? Or do you buy um, it? I, I just, I have a Weber kettle grill, and I just got some, I did a ghetto style. Um, I just got some pellets, uh, like Traeger pellets, mm-hmm. and I wrapped, almost like a cigar, I wrapped a bunch of pellets in a tinfoil tube, almost, Poked a bunch of holes in it and kind of just lit one end. Um, and I put some charcoals near the end to keep it lit. And I'm hoping that it kept kept going. I don't know. I wasn't sure if you went like the uh, the Alton Brown route and used like a hot plate and uh, on like a pie tin and just let it smolder that way. Oh my gosh! Wait a minute. Wait, what? Alton Brown did that? Yeah. So what he did, he just you just get a hot plate. You put a uh-huh. you know a, a tin foil pie pan down on the burner, 
and then you put your your uh, your wood chips in the pie pan just turn it on and you know put it at you know 300 degrees you know kind of medium high or whatever and just let it smolder that way that way you're not setting it on fire you don't have to worry about going out huh uh yeah i'm i'm thinking i'm gonna do that next time <laughs> that's actually a pretty good idea yeah i, I love Alton brown yeah me too he comes up with lots of funny ways to do stuff but yeah check out his uh he has a whole episode on smoking i'm sure you can find that on youtube for cold smoking and smoking salmon. He actually did salmon specifically in a terracotta pot, a big terracotta pot. <laughs> uh, what? I think I've seen this somewhere. Yeah. He made a he made a, a smoker out of a terracotta pot. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I that's actually like a really smart way to do it. Um, it's cheap and retains the You don't heat. have Yeah, you don't have to buy like one of those big green eggs. <clears throat> you could just use a pot from like from uh, Home Depot or yep. you know so it's like the same it's the same as that concept it's really not difficult yeah so yeah alrighty well I'm gonna let you go alright cool alright thank you guys for watching subscribe to Eric at Tea and Tobacco and thanks and, for and check out James over at James Patton you can find him pretty easily yeah you can you'll find me I'm the mattress guy now apparently so <laughs> yeah so All I'm just right, gonna I'm just gonna end the stream and um I'll keep you on Skype. All right. All right. See, Bye, See guys. everyone.